معايير السلام والصحة كان عندنا تعليمات بسعادة عبد الملك الهاشمي إنه ما يعني نوفر أي جهد في إبراز المعايير الصحية وسلامة كل المقاتلين بس مش موقفنا هون وسلامة الكادر الفني وسلامة الكادر اللي بالفندق اللي بيتابع أمورهم وسلامة السواقين فإحنا شو عملنا؟ عملنا منظومة من أكثر من 120 موظف مسؤولين على إطار السلامي إطار الفحوصات الدورية وإطار حتى نظام الـ 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 الأكل والغذاء لكل متدرب وكل مقاتل والتدريب فأهم ثلاث نقاط أخذناها أخذنا على عاتقنا أنه نجيب المقاتلين ومحاربين الإمارات ب 26 خمسة على أبو ظبي وأخذنا فندق وعملنا له معسكر وأيسوليتد كان في يعني أنا بتشكرهم انه قدروا يتحملوا هالبعد عن اهلهم واصحابهم واخواتهم واجواز يعني فقعدوا ثلاث اسابيع بفندق ما تعاملوا مع حدا ثاني وكانوا يتدربوا بمكان محدد هاي نمبر 1 نمبر 2 قدرنا بالتو... يعني بجهد شركان استراتيجيين وشركان الطب... بالمجال الطبي الحمد لله انه نعمل لهم فحوصات دوريه عملنا ثلاث فحوصات لاكثر من 400 420 فحص تم لم لليوم الصبح ممتاز يعني محمد احنا اليوم اضطرينا لسبب غير انه ردنا انه نجيب ثلاثه بدل من الفريق اللي كان معنا وما قدرنا وما ما فاتوا على الارينا الا ما عملنا لهم تست اليوم طلعت النتيجه قبل ساعه وهلا وصلوا ما يعني ما كنا اخذين اني شورت كاتس هذا كان كثير يعني شيء ايجابي وعطى طمانينه للمقاتلين اذا ما شايفنا احنا اليوم كلنا قاعدين الحمد لله رب العالمين احنا ملتزمين ملتزمين بتعليمات الحكومه اللي بتيجي على السوشيال ديستانسينج وعلى الكمامات بس احنا هون انفايرمنت كله الحمد لله رب العالمين سكيور ستيرلايت سكيور وانت لاحظت على ممنوع حدا يفوت بدون ما يكون انها فحوصات الكوفيد احنا ما يعني ما ممكن جيبردايز اي من هذا الاوامر حتى نحن نؤكد للمشاهد الكريم ان مكان الاقامه واماكن التدريبات لا لكجري يعني يعني الفايترز قاعدين في فنادق يعني فندق فايف ستار والجوجيتسو ارينا منشاه تتحدث عن نفسها انت حكيت شيء مهم اسمح لي انت انا بتشكر اختار وبتشكر يوسف احنا بابو ظبي احنا بوجودنا بابو ظبي ما في ابو ظبي ذس از ذس وات اي سيد ذس از ابو ظبي ما فينا نقدم شيء اقل من هيك بعدين احنا شو اسم البطوله يو اي اي ووريورز هذا لحاله بيعطينا شرف كبير كلنا وانا بدي ابشرك وبشر المستمعين والمشاهدين احنا اليوم المحاربين الاسبقين واللي راح يجوا معنا جزء من هاي المنظمه اذا بتحكي مع طاري طاري يمكن بيحكي عن الوريز اكثر ما انا بحكي او اكثر من اي حدا من موظف من فريق العمل اللي انا بشتغل معه بحكي ليش قدرنا قدرنا نحور كل اللي تعلمناه دولتنا من ضيافه من محبه من نخبه من مساعده للاخر حطها بهالمنظومه الجديده احنا جزء من هالتكوين الجميل بهالبلد صحيح. فقدرنا الحمد لله رب العالمين نحافظ على هاي المستويات نعم جميل يوسف يمكن هذه اول مره تدخل بطوله محاربي الامارات وانت يمكن مثال كهدف اساسي من اقامه هذه البطوله تواجد مقاتلين اماراتيين لخوض النزالات وان يصبحوا محترفين في رياضه القتال المختلط شعورك اول شيء خوضك النزال الاول لك في بطوله محاربي الامارات اول شيء مسي بالخير سكر سيد فؤاد الله يسعدك الوحش طارق حبيبي وطبعا اوجه شكري لسيدي ابو محمد عبد المنعم الهاشمي والسيد فؤاد ان اتاح لي الفرصه اني اشارك في هذه البطوله مجهودك طبعا هذا اول بطوله في الاحتراف عندي فايتات في في الهوات لكن طبعا عالم الاحتراف غير وطبعا نفس ما تشوف الحمد لله ما في اي ستريس يعني الحمد لله مطمن وان شاء الله ادخل الفايت واسوي اللي علي وبيض الوجه باذن الله ان شاء الله دائما ما نشوف منك الا بياض وجه خبرني عن استعدادك لخوض نزالك الاحترافي الاول في هذه البطوله في هذه الظروف في هذه الظروف طال عمرك انا احس نفسي استعديت اكثر من ما اني قبل كوفيد <تصفيق> صراحه يعني, يعني انا بشهد <تصفيق> والله <تصفيق> غلبنا اول بطوله محمد <تصفيق> اول بطوله صراحه كنت ها اتمرن شوي مر الدوام حكم الدوام في الغربيه وهذا ما اقدر لكن سبحان الله يعني رب ضارة النافعة مثل ما يقولون طبعا صبح ليل تمرين وأكل ما شاء الله الفندق موفرين أجود أنواع الأكل الحمد لله رب العالمين و ما شاء الله يعني جاهزين الحمد لله لا ما شاء الله ودايت عليك واضح يعني ما شاء الله <تصفيق> لا وبهذا النطاق احنا لازم نتشكر القائمين على الجيتسو ارينا لانه النادي اللي اللي اهلوه للمقاتلين بفتره وجيزه شيء عالمي ولا شو رايك طيب؟ يعني ما يحتاج ابدا والله حتى برا احنا ما نتمرن يعني كذي كيج 
كيج وجم وكل شيء متوفر تو كيجز تو كيجز غيرها ساعات عم نعمل هاشمي صمم انه يكون في تو كيجز وقدرنا نجيبهم قبل ما تسكر الطيران فالحمد لله رب العالمين والاخطار البحري كمان بذل مجهود جدا قوي باتمام اخر يعني التكنيكال ريكويرمنتس للناديد عشان الشباب يتدربوا فيه وهذه مش 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 غريبه عليهم يعني دائما يا فؤاد نحن نقول يعني متابعة سعادة عبد المنعم الهاشمي متابعتك انت متابعة يعني كل الاخوان للمقاتلين الاماراتيين بشكل خاص وكل المقاتلين بشكل عام يعني للتاكد من انهم هم مرتاحين وهم جاهزين لخوض النزالات هذه شهادة يعني مجروحة كل المقاتلين بس انا ببشرك محمد احنا لازم انا رح اسبك بسؤال رح تسالني اياه طب المقاتلين الاماراتيين احنا هالمرة عندنا اثنين يوسف واحمد بس انا بوعدك بالنسخ الجاي بدنا نكبر بطولاتنا ونعد ونزيد عدد البطولات لانه احنا متوقعين اكثر ولا لا صحيح. انا سبقت سؤالك شوي صحيح 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 اسالني سؤال مش هنعرف <تصفيق> لا انت جاوبت عليه لا لا بليز دو <تصفيق> يعني الحين نحن جمعني معاك لقاء في النسخه التاسعه نعم وقلت لي نحن سوف نرى مقاتلين اماراتيين يزيدون في العدد ولكن الجميل الحين ان نرى مقاتلين اماراتيين قادرين نعم على نزال اسماء كبيره في الكيج اكيد اكيد لازم هذا الطبيعي اجين احنا ان ابو ظبي وبالامارات واحنا اليوم بنحضن اكبر برنامج تدريب جيتسو بالعالم ويمكن اكبر برنامج تدريب ماس اديوكيشن سيستم بالعالم كله باي رياضه احنا اليوم في اكثر من 145 الف مواطن مواطني بتدرب جيتسو اذا مش يوميا اسبوعيا ايش طبيعي هاي ثمره هاي ثمره قيادتنا الرشيدي وتعليماتهم وتوجيهاتهم وصرفوا السخي انت انت اليوم ببلد الحمد لله رب العالمين ما فرقوا بين اهتمام قيادتنا بالصحة بالعلام وبالرياضة كله جمعوها مع بعض لأنه إحنا we believe in this عقل السليم جسم السليم كلها فالحمد لله رب العالمين إحنا بعد ما أشرنا إنه إحنا بنحتضن بالدولة أكبر برنامج جيتسو بالعالم وعندنا إياه بأكثر من 200 مدرسة يدرس تدرج جيتسو بحصة فيزياء وكيمياء طالع يدونا في نودس فإشي طبيعي يطلع لنا أبطال زي يوسف أكيد. وأحمد وأكثر فاللي جاي أحسن بإذن الله إن شاء الله طارق أنت أحد أطراف النزال الرئيسي كما ذكرت استعدادك ما هي اخر الـ 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 يعني ما تشعر فيه قبل خوض النزال الرئيسي مدى معرفتك عن خصمك الذي سوف تخوض امام النزال الرئيسي يعني الحمد لله هذا نزالي رقم 16 تقريبا بالاحتراف آه صار عندي خبره كيف اتعامل مع آه الفيلينجز تبعي كل ما كل ما يكون عندي فايت بلك دائما في شعور التوتر في شعور اكسايتمنت في شعور آه يعني خوف و... وكمان يعني شو... آه لك شعور مختلط آه بس بعد الخبرة الطويلة الحمد لله صرت أعرف أتعامل مع المشاعر تبعي وأتحكم فيها بشكل طبيعي آه خصمي جوسيلينو فيريرا هو برازيلي ومقيم في أبو ظبي آه و... آه و... وخبير جوجيتسو وخبير جوجيتسو <تصفيق> أنا المعروف عني أني كمان خبير جوجيتسو وأنا كوتش بتايلند بدرب جوجيتسو كمان فيعني فايت راح يكون حلو بين الطرفين ممكن نتشارك في مهارات جوجيتسو او مهارات الامامي لنشوف لنشوف كيف كيف الفايت راح يطلع انا اي داوت مهارات جوجيتسو انا نوينج طارق ما لا لا طارق يعني الحمد لله انا بعد نفسي من المقاتلين الوير راوندد يعني تعبت على حالي كثير وعزلت حالي بوقت كثير مبكر عن اول شيء عن العالم العربي كانت اللعبه عم عم تنمى واول ما بلشت انا قررت اني اطلع وسافر وبلش تمارين واتعلم يعني اعمل مور لايك ستدي للعبه وكون كل تمرين واتعلم كل مارشال ارتس لابعد الحدود والحمد لله الله وصلني اليوم ويعني انا بعتبر الامارات هي مثل بيتي الثاني تقريبا أكيد 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 معظم معظم مبارياتي هي بدوله الامارات وكبر تعلمت ولعبت وكبرت الريكورد تبعي كله بدوله الامارات وهذا شكر لك لدوله الامارات وشكر للقياده تبع يو اي اي ووريرز وانا يعني دائما بكون مبسوط لما بيجي لهون وبعطي اكثر وان شاء الله يكون اداء حلو ان شاء الله بالتوفيق ونحن اكيد يعني سعيدين بتواجدك هنا وهذا طبعا يعني يعني دوله الامارات العربيه المتحده هي بلدك ويمكن الجميل فؤاد وهذا سؤالي الاخير قبل يعني ما تحول الى الاخوان هناك لخوض والتعليق على النزالات البيرسوناليتي مال طارق ويوسف شوف يعني الدردشه والمرونه والمرح اللي يعكس تماما ما نراه في النزال، نحن نبى نقول ان الشخصية التي تروها في الكيج هي مختلفة تماما، هذول الشباب ما شاء الله مثقفين ودودين طيبين، عكس الصورة تماما اللي تتواجد فيها. هي المهنية محمد، 
حكى لك طارق هاي المهنية انت لما تكون بالكيج عم بتأدي عملك انت يور بروفيشنال فايتر وهذا اللي بيميز اللي هو وال محترف محترف واحنا الحمد لله رب العالمين باليو ووريورز بلشنا يمكن من اول منظومه اول ايكو سيستمز اول او اول منظومه للقطار الغريب بنبلش دخلنا يعني منافسات للهواء لهذا السبب احنا مشان نطور مهاراتهم ونعودهم على القتال ونعودهم على التعامل مع الاخر ويحترم الاخر فانت لو بتشوف بالفندق كلهم قاعدين كاسره نعم فالحمد لله بس هون بدنا نشوف مهارات وكل تعب يبين عنا بالكيتش اليوم شاكر لك استاذ فؤاد شاكر لك يا طارق شاكر لك يا يوسف بالتوفيق لكم ان شاء الله اذا مشاهدينا الكرام فاصل قصير ومن بعد نتحول الى الكيد لمتابعه النزالات العشر التي تحضر في بطوله محاربي الامارات الحادية عشر متابعه طيبه Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans from all around the world, welcome to Abu Dhabi UAE. Now more than ever, we need to fight. Now more than ever, we need to battle. So tonight, 10 incredible fights are on the card. 20 courageous athletes from eight nations are ready to go to war. So without further ado, it's time to knuckle up and throw down. This is UAE Warrior. Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans around the world, welcome to the Jiu-Jitsu Arena here in Abu Dhabi for UAE Warriors 11. We welcome all our viewers on our UAE Warriors YouTube channel and of course those watching us around the world on Abu Dhabi Sports. Our thanks as always to Palm Sports for putting on such an exciting card for UAE Warriors 11 tonight. We've got MMA fighters from around the world. Joining us here this evening, it's a celebration of combat. Boxers, 
kickboxers, strikers, wrestlers, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu practitioners all united for their love of mixed martial arts. Featherweights, lightweights, welterweights and a few catchweights too. Now many are seasoned veterans but some will be making their debut tonight and we wish them all the very best of luck. A quick shout out to our commentating team tonight. We'll be broadcasting around the world of course and we'd like to introduce you to our three ringside judges. Augustine Helgu, Vaktang Sokadze, and of course Rosalind Fehera. Many thanks to our judges for being with us. They've got a tough job for us tonight. Ten fights, and we're going to kick things off with the featherweight division. Let's get started with UAE Warriors 11 and our first fight of the night. Let the battle commence. أسعد الله مساءكم مشاهدينا الكرام ومرحبا بكم من جديد في بطولة جديدة استثنائية في وقت استثنائي مثل ما ذكرنا من يو اي ووريرز النسخة رقم 11 معكم محمد الحوسني والدكتور رياض الطاي أول نزال رياض سيكون بين منافسين يدخلون القفص في عالم الاحتراف لأول مرة يعني صور مرحبا ومرشي بك محمد دخولك القفص عند رحبة على يعني وحدها تدخل قفص خلال هذه الاوقات الصعبه وفي وقت ما في اي جماهير الحمل حملين اكيد وهذا هو بن لوكاس او الركن الازرق ابراهيم قنديل الملقب بهيما من جمهوريه مصر العربيه تخصص ملاكمه رياض فهد عطول إذا هذا هو بن لوكس متخصص المويتاي نزال من المتوقع أن يكون سترايكينج على الواقف رياض بين اثنين مثل ما ذكرنا أول مرة يدخلون القفص ولكن عندهم خلفيات في فنون قتالية تعتمد على اللكمات والركلات طبعا انت لازم تكون تبدي بمكان يعني مؤخرا بدأوا المقاتلين يبدون برياضة الفنون القتالية المختلطة بس بن لوكس يدخل القفص لأول مرة ويعطي لخصم المقاتل المصري إبراهيم قنديل حوالي أربع إنشات أربع بوزات بينه وبينه كفرق يعني المقاتل المصري فرعون طويل جدا منشوف <تصفيق> <تصفيق> إذا عنصر طبعا الطول بيلعب دور كعادة السترايكينج مشاهدين الكرام هذه الأمور مهمة لي الطول بين المقاتلين وفارق يعني طول الاطراف سواء كان الذراعين او الرجل يعني لاحظوا حتى بنزال نزالات التايكواندو الفرق كان بين السنوات الاخيره اخر 20 سنه مقاتل التايكواندو صاروا اطول قامه ليش؟ لان الوصول للخصم اكثر فصار كمقاتل قصر القامه صعب تسوي سترايكنج ككيكس كركلات لخصمك فتحولت الى مثل نزال خاص لطويل القامه مؤخرا. 
هذا هو البريطاني بن لوكاس يدخل الى القفص الان ويمثل فريق كوبرا هذا الفريق طبعا اللي موجود في ابو ظبي ومن ضمن ايضا مقاتلين سنشاهدهم هذه الليله <تصفيق> making his debut tonight fighting out of the Egypt الحكم هو أليشاندري ناسيمنتو هنا نظر أيضا لركن المنافسين في هذا النزال الأول سيكون في الركن الأحمر أو اللي هناك شريط أحمر على قفازة أو خلينا نقول القفاز الأسود سيكون بن لوكس أما القفاز الأبيض سيكون إبراهيم قنديل ومن البداية ركلة كانت من البريطاني يعني بعد مس القفازات كان مستعجل المقاتل البريطاني يثبت نقطة معروف مشاهدينا الكرام ان نادي كوبرا متخصص بالمويتاي فنتوقع من مقاتليه اليوم قوة اللكمات والركلات كما نشاهد عدة حركات تمويه من المقاتل المصري صراحة بدون ما او في كان فاول في في طرف الاصبع دخل الى عيون المقاتل ال آه البريطاني طبعا الحكم المفروض يحطه في الركن المحايد سنشاهد الاعاده الان نعم يمكن هذه كانت لك ما اعتقد شرعيه يمكن اللقطه الثانيه كانت اللقطه الثانيه بالفعل عنده من حقه خمس دقائق وفي تحذير شفوي طبعا القوانين الجديده في الفنون القتاليه المختلطة تحذر من حتى المد الإيد حتى لو ما كان في ضربة أو في خطأ من حق الحكم يأخذ يا أما يعطيه تحذير شفوي أو يأخذ نقطة من المقاتل المصري استدعاء للطبيب ربما نعم بالفعل هنا الإعادة طبعا اللي راح يصير لو وقف الحكم هذا نعم النزال شفتها رياض بالفعل كانت غير مقصوده يعني وتحصل دائما في الفنون القتاليه المختلطه نوعيه القفازات اللي ما قدروا يقولوا حل يعني حتى تذكروا تكلموا على تدوير القفاز او تحويره وصارت صعبه طبعا زي ما انت زي ما انت اعتقد المقاتل قاعد يقول انا اريد اسال اذا في مي ينحط على عينه موطول باب القفص مفتوح اعزائي المشاهدين معناها القتال لن يستانف يعني من الاشياء اللي تكلمنا دائما بها محمد انه ماكو حل للقفازات لان لازم القفاز تكون مفتوح لكي تمسك خصمك يعني وبعض اللجان الرياضية في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية يعني كانت صارمة في الفترة الأخيرة فيما يخص فرد الأصابع يعني لما هما طبعا في الرياضة هذه أو حتى في الملاكمة والمويتاي بس طبعا قفازاتهم تكون مغلقة دائما الخصم يفرد إيده على جدام يعني وأصابعه تكون طالعة على أساس يقيس المسافة بينه وبين خصمه وأثناء هذه الـ يعني الـ أو أثناء هذا النوع من القتال تحصل طبعا بعض الأمور مثل ما شاهدناها قبل قليل ولكن سيستمر أو سيستأنف النزال الآن مع أن هناك يعني بن لوكس متضايق صراحة يحس أن هذا بيأثر على أداء في ال... وأعتقد رح ي... آه, آه وقف النزال أوقف أوقف النزال أليشاندري ناسيمنتو يبدو أنها حالة كانت خطرة أو صعبة بالنسبة لبن لوكس متضايق جدا من طريقة خسارته بهاللحظة راح يكون نو كونتست يمكن يكون نو كونتست 
لا اتوقع اتوقع صح بس هي يعني كانت غير مقصوده صح لان كانت لو يكون في جوله ثانيه يكون فيها باب وجواب بس ما اعرف ليش حتى المقاتلين طلعوا من المفروض يكون في قرار رسمي الان من المذيع على الاقل نعرف النتيجه يعني بس يبدو ان الحكم اخرجهم اه الان الان تحدث اليشاندري ناسيمنتو مع الحكم في الخارج حلمي الاندلسي وسيتم الاعلان المفروض يكون في اعلان حتى لو كان نو نو كونتست المفروض يكون اللي هي قرار غير محتسب يكون يبدو انهم لن يعلنون لا بس اعتقد فادي ال اوكي الان راح يدخل يجب ان يعلن رسميا مثل ما قلنا قرار غير محتسب اعزائي المشاهدين لو كانت هذه صار في الجوله الثانيه ياخذون بقرار الحكام في الجوله الاولى او اذا كانت ضربه مقصوده, مقصودة يكون اقصاء اقصاء ولا يكون نعم اذا لن يحسب في رصيد المقاتلين او لن تحسب نتيجه هذا النزاع لكن بيكون هناك 1 ان سي على سجلهم يعني تعتبر بدون نتيجه نعم خلينا نشوف مره ثانيه المخالفه هذه كانت لكمه حلوه من ابراهيم قنديل هنا نعم من الزاويه الاخرى هذه اللكمه الاولى اللي صار فيها هاي قانونيه كانت To our second fight tonight here in UAE Warriors 11. If you are joining us from around the world, welcome to the UAE Warriors 11. Fight number two is in the lightweight division, the 70 kilogram fight. Let's call out our Warriors, starting off with Muhammad Kareem Al Janan. هذا هو محمد كريم الجنان مقاتل السوري يدخل القفص اولا ممثلا لتيم نوغيرا نعم تيم نوغيرا دبي والحلو في هذه البطوله يمكن تكلموا عنها الجماعه في الاستوديو 
ان كل المقاتلين من مواطني ومقيمي دولة الامارات ويمكن صعب انك تحصل اي دولة في العالم تنظم بطولة بعشر جنسيات يعني كان ممكن حتى يدخلون جنسيات اخرى الى هذه البطولة صح في اعتقد حتى في مقاتلين قاعدين على احتياط يعني اعتقد في اربع في اربع مقاتلين على احتياط صراحة اعتقد كان في صارت ايضا اصابة طلع واحد من المقاتلين من كازاخستان طلع ايضا كيرغستان كازاخستان اي بس حلو انه شوف مرات بروسلي عنده مقوله مشهوره يقول لك الحظ يفضل ال ال ذا بريبيرد اللي يكون متحضر يعني الحظ راح يساعد الشخص يكون متحضر فاعتقد اليو اي ووريرز كانوا متحضرين انه ينتظروا حتى قبل ما يسوون الكوانتين على ابو ظبي جابوا المقاتلين دخلوهم قبل الوقت عشان يتجنبون اي مشاكل صراحه نتمنى يكون النزال الثاني احلى من النزال الاول او على الاقل اطول شويه <تصفيق> And his opponents, Alphonse Vini Bessala. No, you need to have that. No, you need to have that. 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 هذا هو الكاميروني الفونس بيسالا واذا كنا نعرف الكاميرونيين نعرف انهم مقاتلين مثيرين صراحه داخل القفص وفي اي رياضه قتاليه اخرى وسنرى ايضا مقاتل كاميروني اخر في النزال الرئيسي المشترك هو جورج ديا نتمنى ان يكون الفونس بيسالا اللي واضح على الشاشه بنفس متعه واثاره مواطنه جورس ديا ديا كان من المفضلين لجميع المشاهدين اللي يحبون اللي يشاهدوا الفنون القتاليه كان مقاتل مميز صراحه يترك بصمته دائما على النزالات حتى في اخر نزال كان موجود اللي صار نو كونتست كان هناك كثير من التعليقات على ديا او الكاميرون بصوره عامه عندهم القوه الجسمانيه عندهم الحركه السريعه ويعطوك ويعطون المشاهدين الاسريه شوم الشب الاستعراض الجميل للمشاهدين صراحه وهذا اللي يحتاج المقاتلين صراحه في في هذا الزمن من الفنون القتاليه المختلطه خاصه ان عنصر الترفيه اختلط مع عنصر الرياضه الرياضه وانت عارف هذا الشيء كان المكراجر كمثال من الامثله الكبيره المقاتلين بالملاكمه بكره السله كل لازم يعطوك استعراض لان بالنهايه لازم يستمتع الجمهور بما يراه داخل القفص نشوف المعلومات على المقاتلين الاثنين Our second fight tonight here at UAE Warriors 11 in the 70 kilogram division, the lightweight division. Introducing first the fighter to my right in the blue corner, hailing from Syria, fighting out of the United Arab Emirates. He stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighed in at 69.2 kilograms. He's a boxer with a record of no wins and one loss. Mohammed Karim Al Janan. And his opponent to my left in the red corner, hailing from the Cameroon, fighting out of the UAE. He stands at 5 feet 7 inches tall, 67 kilograms. He's a striker with a record of four wins, two losses. It's the Bob Beast, Alfonso Vini Pesala. And you referee for this fight, Alvaro Shittini. Alvaro Cardoso, who is the النزال الثاني في الوزن الخفيف نزال الأول كان في وزن الريشة الآن ننتقل إلى وزن 70 كيلوغرام وزن الخفيف ألفونس فيني بسالة بالقفاز الأسود ومحمد كريم الجنان بالقفاز الأبيض طبعا نتوقع يكون الايقاع للنزال شويه اسرع واحسن من النزال الأولاني لأن لما تسوي النزالات الأولانية ايقاع سريع بقية النزالات تصير أسرع شغال على المضادات المقاتل الكاميروني حلو من قاضية قاضية من الكاميروني بيست 
في وقت مبكر تكلمت رياض تتمنى انك تشوف نزال مثير اكثر من النزال الاول انتهى تقريبا يمكن في نفس التوقيت ولكن بطريقه مختلفه <تصفيق> وطبعا يحاول اعتقد مقاتل السوري للاسف قاعد شويه يتناقش محمد كريم الجنان نتمنى لك الصحه والحكم سوى الشيء الصحيح صراحه لان عيونه انقلبت وما يعرفوا وين يعني اعتقد سالوه انت وين بالجوجيتسو ارينا قال لهم لا بالمبادره ارينا وتغير الاسم من زمان صراحه كل ما يعني فعلا كان شغال على الضربات المضاده الكاونتر اتاك المقاتل الكاميروني وبالفعل قلنا ان المقاتلين الكاميرونيين شوف يعني يا جماعه لازم حد يمسك المقاتل السوري يعني مخلينا يعني هو للحين 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 يعني اذا الفونسو فيني بسالا يفوز بالضربه القاضيه زمن النزال اقل حتى من النزال الاول يعني اعتقد لان شوي حموا يعني صراحه <تصفيق> طبعا لاحظنا الماسكات الاقنعه الجميله اللي يو اي ووريرز سووها خلينا نشوف الضربه القاضيه ويا حلوه خطاها فيها ساريه كانت يسرى اولى ويسرى آه الثانيه يسرى الثانيه بالحالتين هذه ما لبست بشكل كامل لكن الثانيه بتلبس يعني تاثرت عليه صراحه اليسرى الاولاني يعني شوف مع انه كملاكم المفروض يعرف ال يعني الضربات اللي تبعدك عن خصمك هي الضربات المستقيمة You know, at times, he's appearing in the movies and stuff. Yes. So our friend Steve is going to interview the winner for our social media. And Daniel and I, we're going to he be here waiting for the next fight. So, Daniel, you have a fight coming, huh, in the end of the year. Copa Ciclone in November. Not, not MMA. No MMA, submission wrestling. No or gi. no gi. Jiu Jitsu with, no gi. With uh, Luta Livre standout Bizoro, right? Luis Bizoro, a uh, former UFC fighter, former the Ultimate Fighter. So I'm pretty confident. I don't compete for, it's been four years, wow. but I've been doing Jiu Jitsu since I'm born. So yeah. I started Jiu Jitsu at three years old. So but it's I no just. Gi, right? Yeah, it's no gi. I'm pretty confident for no gi. I'm also world champion, ADCC veteran. So I, I'm pretty happy with the opportunity to be back on the mat against a great fighter like Bizoro. And I heard a lot of great fighters are going to be there, right? Yes, we have few coaches. We have Marcelo Vanusa fighting, Pedro Duarte, Thiago Monstro, Vinicius. Wow. And. Some more, there's some there. few more, some few more. Have a good, we have a good crew representing UAE in Brazil. My Jiu Jitsu master Eduardo Jamelon is going to be there. Fight Eduardo Jamelon and many more. It's going to be some a great BJJ stars will be in this event. Wow. End of November 26, 29, 26, 27, 28. Sorry, in Rio de Janeiro. In Rio de Janeiro. Very nice. UAE will be with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. With you and all the others. Yes, I just need to start my 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 preparation, my condition training, jiu-jitsu training, and. I want to start for the night we've had tonight here. Let's let's get ready, sir. At the jiu-jitsu arena in Abu Dhabi, our next fight is in the catch weight of 92 kilograms. Let's welcome both our fighters, starting with Louis Fraga. Eu sei que eu posso suportar, senhor. Pois tem 
poder se aperfeiçoa na fraqueza, Deus. Trazendo a água. Yeah. Por isso eu posso suportar. Por isso eu posso suportar. Yuri, Black Belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, you expect that he's gonna take the fight to the ground, right? I believe he's gonna take the fight to the ground. He has a lot of experience. He has 13 victories, 11 losses in MMA. So this is, he's been doing this for a while. He's also a very explosive fighter. And he has a very heavy ground and pound. And his opponent is a striker. This fight against a striker. So this will be a good match. Let's see who's gonna play the game first. Nowadays, I think it's pretty difficult to, 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 to guess the outcome. Even if it's a striker and a wrestler, sometimes you see wrestlers striking, strikers trying to take down, right? Yes, right. That's what makes MMA so incredible. You just, you never expect what's gonna happen. <laughs> you see, BJJ guys with strikers, you see strikers finishing fights today. I think the athletes today are, are training everything. If you don't Perfect. train everything, you're not ready for this sport. I mean, that's the beautiful, the, the beautiful thing about mixed martial arts. You never know what's going to happen. I could be a jiu-jitsu specialist, but I could knock out my opponent on any given day. The same thing happens to me. My opponent is a boxer, but he could submit me. That's why mixed martial arts is a very and beautiful sport. Monaco, Ibrahim Asawi. Major pops to Ibrahim El Sawi. Just like what you said, this guy is always ready. He trains year round, day after day. He's always in condition, he's always in shape, he's fighting ready. The good thing about Ibrahim El Sawi is that even though he lost his last fight, you know that this guy can actually deliver some wins. So we're gonna see tonight if he wins versus his opponent. Yuri, one Flag important up. thing to note is that he did not make weight. It was scheduled to be a 86 kilogram fight. He came in heavy, he came 92. Right. But Yuri is another, he's this same kind of guy. He never yeah. say no. Right. I told him, I said, Yuri, you cannot make weight to the problem for you. He said, no, master, let's fight. Of course, you'll be for, for fitting some of these first. Right. It's in the contract. But there we go, we still have a fight. So for tonight, we have a jiu-jitsu specialist versus a mixed martial artist. Ibrahim El Salvi versus Yuri Fraga, who cast with one or two kilograms. For the official announcement, here is Fadi. Okay, tail of the table, ladies and gentlemen, our Brazilian Yuri Fraga. Standing six feet in Abraham Al Sabi, six feet three. Three catch rates of, 20, of 92 kilograms, three five minute rounds. Starting off with the fighter to my right in the blue corner, hailing from Brazil, fighting out of the UAE. He's a jiu-jitsu practitioner with a record of 13 wins, 11 losses. Stands at six feet tall, weighs in at 85.8 kilograms. Blessed Yuri Fraga! And his opponent to my left in the red corner. Haley from Egypt fighting out of the UAE. He's an MMA fighter standing at 6 feet 3 inches tall, weighing in at 92.4 kilograms. Polaco Ibrahim Sawi. And our referee for this fight, Henry Andalusi. 
Okay, gentlemen, here we go. Our referee, referee Helmy Lan Dulce, one of the veteran referees of the UAE Warriors. And here we go. We've got Ibrahim El Shawi from Egypt and Yuri Fraga from Brazil. Here we go. Oh! 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 oh. oh. A low blow right away. That was really hard. That, that was that, a very hard kick. And that happened to the quite, groin. quite often when you have a, a, a south pole against a, a yeah. orthodox because of the low kick. Man, that was hard. That was really hard. I we almost can feel that on myself. That was loud and hard. Let's hope he's okay. I hope he can recover and come back. We all know Yuri is very hungry to do his debut on UAE Warriors. That's his chance. He was ready for. Here, let's look at the and replay. It'd be a shame if he finished like that. And he's been asking oh. to fight for so long. And that's it. It's a no contest. You're going to recover it, from that. It's a very it hard broke, kick to the groin. It broke the protection. The cup, broke yeah. The, the cup. The cup. Broke the cup. That, that's how hard it was. The, oh, the wow. Kick. And Yuri Frag is still then very unfortunate here at fight number three to end it that way. And we're going to have the team doctors coming in. Did they in. stop the fight already? It yes, stopped. sir. Wow. Uh, it broke the, 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 the cup. That's how strong it was. That was a really strong kick. Now he's speaking with us, complaining that the, the, the kick was not low, it was high. But if you look at the replay once again, it was it was pretty clear. Although it was unintentional, yes, it was given no, the benefit of doubt. Of you know, Ibrahim El Saudi is not a, a dirty fighter. He is no, no, no. a fierce competitor, and this guy is is a great athlete. You know, that was unintentional. Unfortunately, things happen in a fight. You know, you can't see everything when you strike, especially for a low kick like that. He was trying to aim for the midsection. But I can see a picture of the, the strike and it's clearly, it was clearly a low blow. I hope so too. Your frag is still down and being looked and checked out by our medical team. So excited about this fight. Be true. Fraga is in He's in bad shape. He's in such pain. Okay, we'll be coming back. We're going to come back after this for the next fight. Coming up is fight number four in lightweight. Back to the 70 kilogram division. Okay, coming up, gentlemen, once again, all our fans watching are live and worldwide right now. Here is the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee, Henry Andalusi, has called to stop this fight just eight seconds into the very first round, declaring a no contest due to an unintentional low kick. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. All the fight fans, that was a no contest. We are moving up to the next fight. Here is the replay once again. There we go. That was a nasty, unintentional strike to the groin. So you have two no contests already. 
yes, in the sir. same night. Yes, sir. I mean, that's how crazy MMA is. You never know what's really going to happen. MMA, that's how it happens. Anything so, can happen. Yeah, just Yuri be all right. It was a very strong kick. He right. stayed in the floor for a long time, but I mean, I'm pretty sure he will. Nobody is going to be able to survive a kick like that to the groin. Yes, that but broke, let's, broke the protection. Broke, broke the cup. That's yeah, how, broke the cup. That's how hard the kick was. So, let's just hope, I mean, Yuri recovers fast, and once again, he'll get just, back. We just want to make sure Ibrahim El Sawi is not a dirty fighter. That yes. was just very unfortunate scenario that happened. Anyway, coming up is fight number four, a lightweight division. right do you think he wants to send a message well let's find out what happens in the next fight you know i think we got fireworks coming up but you know that's how i've been very famous nowadays especially in social media at the back a wrestler will never lost from kyrgyzstan 
Very tough, very strong. A wrestler against the submission boy. The athlete from Kikistan. This is done against Asia. It's going to be a very interesting matchup that we have. A grappler versus a wrestler. Kikistan from Valentina Chavichenko, UFC champion. Oh. She's from Kikistan. Yeah, yeah. A lot of tough fighters coming from there, right? Yes. Okay, gentlemen, here we go now. It's going to be Kyrgyzstan versus Egypt, who we've got as a just a specialist versus a wrestler. And for the official announcement, here is our cage announcer, Fadi. A fourth fight, fight tonight in the 70 kilogram lightweight division. division. Introducing first the, the fighter standing to my right in the blue corner, hailing from Egypt and fighting out of the United Arab Emirates. Stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighed in at 70.7 kilograms. He's a jiu-jitsu expert with a record of three wins and one loss. It's the submission boy, Omar Eladuddin. And his opponent standing to my left in the red corner. Hailing from Kyrgyzstan, also fighting out of the UAE. He also stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing at 70.2 kilograms. He's a wrestler, undefeated, with two wins, no losses. Atabek Abdinikaipov. And your referee for this fight, Henry al -Andalusi. Okay, here we go now, gentlemen. Our referee for the match is referee Helmi Landolsi. Okay, guys, so here's the thing about this fight. We got a great match coming up. This is fight number four now in the lightweight division, 70 kilogram category. Here we go. No, oh, two grapplers. Oh, whoa! Wild oh, swings. Back. And here we go now. Takes him down. Easily defended by Atabek. Now let's see his jiu-jitsu. Should be interesting to see who's got a better ground game between a wrestler and a jiu-jitsu fighter. Just like what you said, there's a lot of great fighters coming from Kyrgyzstan. A lot of great wrestling pedigree fighters out there. The very good wrestlers there. Very tough guys. Very coming tough from that guys. Country. Amazing Omar program. Working on the deep half guard. Not being able to do any offense so far. It's very hard being a bar against a wrestler like this. They have such a great balance, such a great top control. This is not good, not a good position to be. No. Atabek controlling him very well, doing some damage from the top. Plus, he have a lot of space that to strike. Plus, he's controlling the top position. That's got to hurt. Body strike. Just look at the left side of his back. You see some bruising forming over there. You know, these no body strikes, the more you take them, it takes a toll in your body, actually. I think he's showing very good control on the top. Just take him time, striking, keep the top position, and that's going to wear the guy out. And the thing about Omar trying to sweep is he's trying to go up. Going up against a wrestler is very hard. You should try to sweep for the other side, right, Daniel? Yeah, I agree. Like, 
He's just been trying, but in the same time, he got a very good balance, very good control. And I think they're trying to stand it up. Is he going to stand up? Is he going to go down? Omar still laying on the ground. Probably with this half guard sweep is MMB because if you don't sweep, oh. you get a strike. You get hit. And then he does, he turns. Okay, let's see what happened in this exchange. Now I think Omar is pretty gassed up. Let's see if he's going to try to engage. Atabek, Abdul Milipatov has been so aggressive. Attack it. Oh, oh, oh. And now Atabek going for a submission. On the submission, boy. Let's and see. Oh, oh, he's going to take, he's gonna take it. Oh. Change form, boy. Oh. Tap, tap. Wow. Just like wow, that. Amazing. The wrestler tapping the jujitsu guy. But like Daniel said, everybody trains everything nowadays, right? Another that was a good surprise. You know, always said, we got a great program back in Kyrgyzstan. This guy won the first round. Just like that, first round submission win. He came Ombar. up with a good strategy. He's still right. on the top, he stays strong. He did right. a body shots, wear him out. And we were talking about how great this guy was. Okay, for the official announcement, here we go. Ladies
Morales, what's happening? Had an amazing show going on, sir. Well, I mean, we won a longer fight, but again, I mean, I guess the fighters have been so exciting. Yes. I mean, what we did this time, we made them train too long. That's I mean, right, They've been sir. trained for 27 days, three times, four times a day. Maybe they overtrained. Yeah. Sir, it's, it's MMA. You never know what's happened. This is a... Uh, that's what makes this game so unique. It's always... Uh, anything can happen inside a cage. Absolutely, so. absolutely. You can never anticipate. I mean, but again, we had two fights, unanticipated ends, too quick, one poke in the eye, one answer, unintentional, low, low, low kick. I didn't like the low kick. I was very bit... I felt the pain. I felt the pain, our boy. That's a little shame, but I just hope that it's all right. They're going to have another opportunity to another shot in the future. I found in this, Morales, that's a crazy way through. It's such a harsh end in five seconds. They've been in a camp for a whole month, a whole month. And they need another chance to demonstrate their ability. I feel the pain. Exactly, exactly. This is a good fight coming up. Yes. Next fight is a way to have a local guy fighting. Ahmed Darmaki. It's Ahmed or Yusuf? Ahmed Aldamaki. UAE local. Striker. Is it Ahmed? I want to make sure it's Ahmed. Yeah, that should be exciting. And you notice, with, what we, with the confinement we had, there was a good opportunity for many rookies to show their talent. So, in this version of our Warriors, certainly, we gave an opportunity for five rookies to come to the professional Doing their debuts. Yes, sir. Steven, are you on with that? Yes, sir. How do you feel about five rookies in this fight? This fight? I think it's awesome. I mean, we're giving a lot of cheers. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Okay. I think it's awesome to have a lot of rookies in the roster for this for this uh, edition of UAE Wars. It's about giving a chance to a lot of hey, potential fighters. Yeah, that's our boy. That's a homegrown talent, by the way. Huh? Yes, sir. Did I you mean, see? It's, it's remarkable. Ahmed is a full-time staff nurse. Wow. Yes. Wow. He's a hero. Wow. Ahmed yes. is a full staff nurse at the emergency in Cleveland Hospital. Wow. Mashallah. Yes. Mashallah. So amazing. He And he made time to be a fighter. Absolutely. Wow. It's exciting. He has an interesting entrance. Look. Yes. What would you wear? He's always excited to have local athletes in the game. He's wearing a pink PE. Show the people here that you have amazing athletes in UAE. Absolutely. <laughs> he's, he's doing a show. He loves us. He lives for this. And that is what you want in a fighter. You got to own the moment. You know what I'm saying? You got your opportunity. You got to show for it. That's right. Dermarki is obviously hometown hero. He's an Emirati. His record is one with five losses. This fight is in the featherweight division. All right. And he's going up against a kickboxer making his debut from Uganda, Kagi Mukiga. to be really hungry for redemption. He had six fights, had few losses on his record. So he's fighting home. He looks ready. He, we all know he trained very hard. So I expect the army to put in a good show. Right. Now sure we're gonna have here we're gonna have a great fight now. We got a guy who's having his pro game here, you are your warrior. You're not gonna say he's a rookie. He's from Uganda. And he's much larger than kickboxing. So it's going to be interesting to see how he fares versus Ahmed Al-Maki. 
who is also a specialist in striking. Once again, fight against two strikers, always right. exciting. Right. I'm back. Important call. <laughs> Work never stops here. Welcome back, boss. Okay, it's really interesting to have two guys enter. We've got Kiga, who was doing handstands. Now we get Alvin Maki owning a stage with the PPE. Here we go. Ahmed Elder Monkey now enters the cage. It's time for fight number five. This is once again in our featherweight division of 66 kilograms in the UE Warriors 11. Ahmed is bouncing. He's look, he looks like a hunter. He's looking for a prey. I hope, I hope <laughs> he can display what how ferocious he can get. I think he's trying to smell blood. Listen, I've seen Ahmed train. He is so much fiercer in training than in this. Right. Okay, you're chilling at the table, ladies and gentlemen. We got a featherweight bout between Uganda and UAE. Ahmed al versus Kagibu Ivan Kiga. For the official announcement, here is our ring announcer, Mr. Fadi. Here we go with our fifth fight tonight at UAE Warriors 11. It's a three fight in the rounds in the 66 kilogram featherweight division. It should be from first to fight to my right in the blue corner. Hanging from Uganda, fighting out of the United Arab Emirates. He stands at 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 63.3 kilograms. He's a kickboxer making his debut tonight. It's Tachimo Ivanako the Lion. And his opponent to my left in the red corner. From the United Arab Emirates, standing at 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighing in at 65.6 kilograms. He's a striker with one win and five losses. Please welcome Ahmed Dabraki. And the referee for this fight is Alvaro Shimi. Ahmed is ready, guys. All right, Jeff. They all look now. ready. Our referee for the uh, fight is referee Alvaro Cardoso. That would be very exciting. Although I'm very impressed with Kagimo's uh, uh, physique. Oh, oh! Look at oh that. What a great way to start a fight. He's very aggressive. Just like what you said, he's trying to hunt. It I is. think he smells blood. Yes, it's a very intimidating move. Although right. Kagimo is, 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 he looks like malicious in his, in his observation. Look at him. He's right. like trying to understand where Ahmed's going to punch him next. Exactly. And it's pretty obvious that Alder Maki's got a height advantage, but let's uh, not take into account the skills of high Kiga. Kick. Yeah, but Ahmed is not defending himself. I mean, I don't. That's very unorthodox, right? I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's got an orthodox stance. Yeah. I think he's putting his hands a little bit down. I think he's trying to taunt his opponent. Can be. Never know the strategy. Oh, look, look! He's trash talking. He got. Oh, he uh, got hit in the face. He's doing more talking than fighting. That's a stiff jab. I mean, they they had a, they had they started their fight yesterday. Did you see the win? Yes. We, we had to get security then. Look at him. I mean, these guys. They're not scared. They look at them. They're look, 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 look. Here we go. We got strikes coming up. He's going to go for the... down. Oh! There you go. Oh! Ahmed got a takedown. He's in a good position now. He needs to try to keep the top position. But it's still impressive. And he got up again. Oh! He went for a guillotine. Looks, here we go. Look, look. If he, if he try to squeeze that one, I think he get a submission, but it's not pretty tight. Here we go. going to stand it up. In that case, he needs to try to close the guard. If you don't close the guard, it's very hard to finish in a guillotine. All right. And he was fit. I mean, he can, he can, he can resist this. This is right. And what's really impressive is for Alder Maki, like what you said, he's a full-time staff nurse. 
but he's also a fighter. So that's the kind of nerves you don't want to mess with. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you, you, go, you go for a checkup. Excuse me, Mr. Nurse. I'm going to go see the doctor. You can't mess with me. I'm a fighter. Steve, how did I find out about him being a nurse? I was actually at the hospital at the emergency. Really? I this guy. I'm like, I'm like, are you well? I'm like, I work here. I'm like, look at what I'm wearing. I, it, I couldn't even... Put together his, you know, his attire. <laughs> <laughs> Would you expect him to be an American? No, not at all. But then again, that's his life. An orthodox fighter. That's right. really cool. You should respect right. that, sir. I think he's trying to mix it up right now. Get out of the cage. <laughs> I think these guys have See, some kind of animosity. That was a hard kick now. They're not protecting each other, though. That's sweet. Oh, Ooh, look at that. That's a karate kid move. You know, earlier we were talking about the rookies. I just don't like Carmen just put his hand down. Yeah, That's yeah. very dangerous. What's he doing? He it's should keep his hands up. He's not intelligently he, defending himself. He's lucky he cannot. Enough. He's letting himself get punched and, you know, look at his body. He's full of, like, bruises, red patches in his torso. So we were talking about rookies. Oh, you eat worse. Right. I think it's a great platform for talented fighters. That's like what we're seeing right now. Keegan right here, mm. he fights like. He's a veteran. He doesn't, yes, he doesn't that's fight like his a rookie. Debut. He's, he, he feels pretty relaxed. Ahmed is giving him the opportunity. Sorry. Yeah, here we go. He's up in the cage. He's trying to squeeze it out. That's a guillotine. He got a guillotine again. Mm. If he can close the guard or bring him to the floor and stay on the top position, but that's why you out to. You do a lot of power. Exactly. These type of moves. I think he's draining Kegigmo. Could that be his... That's put it lock. There we go. If it, it on, now he closed the guard. Now he's on. Now he's oh! on. Oh! He tapped just call, like Morales. that. He called it. Yes, See, sir. See, this is the difference between me, who's a number man, and the jiu-jitsu expert. Yes, sir. <laughs> he called it. And I thought Abba's going to get in trouble. Yeah, we always know if you got a guillotine, if you close... Oh, 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 oh. We got to stop this now. We got security run. coming I gotta in. I got to run. I got to run. I mean, these guys hate each other. Oh, my goodness. Cool down, guys. This, this is this, not good. You're all professionals. This is not sportsmanship right here. This is right not here. good. It's not part of the game. This is not sportsmanship. I think you should try to cool this out. Anyways, the, the blood is in the head. They, That's right. They will regret I mean, for this type of attitude. I think they're going to try to take Kiga out of the cage. That's what we're seeing right now. Yeah, I just don't see what happened. Maybe they I say mean, something to each other or... No, 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 not really. I mean, after the fight, they were go. just... There you go. They were just looking at each other and then, you know... That's how it should be. Okay, now look at what happens. Fight there is go. over, fight is over, sir. That's right. This is a sport. But you know, sometimes... One gonna win, one gonna lose, and that's it. True, true. I'm not saying what happened was supposed to be happening in, in, in fights, you know, but sometimes you can't... Avoid things like this because oh, you're no. running. You're running on emotions. You yeah, have too you're, much emotions. You're, you're mad at your opponent. You lost. You're, you know, just a lot of adrenaline pumping right now. But anyway, here we go. They look yeah. like these guys already poking each other since, <laughs> since the months wins. ago. Yeah. Since the wins. Yesterday. Even before. It's crazy. All right, here we go. The official results and announcements. Anyway, it's all good now. They shake hands. Ladies and gentlemen, you are free of as well as after this uh, contest at 3 minutes 25 seconds of the very first round, we declare the winner by submission due to a chop hold, Ahmed Adamaki. And of course, to present the award, Mr. Fouad Darwish, please join us. To present the award for a UAE fighter, Ahmed Adamaki. Next to the submission, well done, Ahmed. And of course, Mr. Fouad is with us, managing director of Palm Sports. Many, once again, many congratulations to Ahmed Adamaki. We'd like to say a few words, Ahmed. I just want to say sorry for my opponent. I'm very sorry for what I did. Well Many congratulations, Ahmed. Good, good fight, guys. guys. Good fight.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, those just joining us on our UAE Warriors YouTube channel and of course around the world, watching on Abu Dhabi Sports, we're only halfway through UAE Warriors 11. Our next fight is in the 77 kilogram World's Weight Division. Let's welcome our Warriors to the cage, beginning with Abdul Hakim Wahid. He's been training very, very hard. Every fight, he's looked better. But his jiu-jitsu is amazing, too. His jiu-jitsu is his, his, his strong point. So I, I think he'll take this fight to the ground. He's got a submission. I heard he's been training out of Cobra with Bruno Caveira, all those yes. white tight specialists. So he's, he's stand up street sharp, too. He's been trained a bunch of beasts at Cobra, we all know, like, and he's look very, very sharp, like, even follow his videos and then see his training. I think he's a, he's the future. Marcos had a great point. future in his point. We welcome Marcos, Paulo Costa. Coming out of, with Borges Sinistro. Yeah, good song. <laughs> Daniel, manda um abraço pro Brasil. Manda um abraço pro Brasil. Forte o, abra... o pessoal do Brasil aí assistindo a gente. Pessoal do Brasil, todos os meus amigos, familiares, um forte abraço para vocês. Eu feliz dia dos namorados. Um abraço pra galera de Vitória, os capixabas. Espero que todo mundo esteja se divertindo com esse evento. Um abraço do mestre Eduardo Jamelão, a galera. Um abraço do moço. Boa tarde. <risos> Boa tarde, Brasil. Boa tarde, Brasil. I'm really excited to see Marcos tonight. Me Two fights, two wins. I just know he's taking this very serious. He's been trained so much. He's really want to bring MMA to his life and become a full-time MMA fighter. So I know this means a lot to him. Well, now the chance. As I mean, his friend, right. and I wish he's conquered and realize his dreams. Right. So we got a great match coming up. We've got Brazil versus Morocco coming up. All the fans watching live and worldwide. You know, talking about Morocco, there's a lot of great fighters also from Morocco. Yes, sir. Great country to train at. He's gonna feel a boxer. Boxer guys are always dangerous, man. Like, 
That's right. You really need to be careful with these hands. Okay, for the official announcement, here is Fawdy. for this match is referee Hale Milandolci. Fight number six happening now, welterweight, 77 kilogram. Marcus Paulo Costa from Brazil versus Abdel Hakim Wahid from Morocco, nicknamed Fear. And Marcus looks so strong, much stronger than before, right? And he looks very He looks pretty big move. today, after the weight cut. Abdel Hakim I mean looks pretty stiff, though. some muscle on him. We're going to find out who's going to win in the battle of a boxer versus a grappler. Marcos Paulo Costa is obviously a decorated grappler. Scooter exploded like kicks and he's a boxer. It's always work. And it shows that he's been training a lot of Muay Thai with the guys there. At he he has a long body, he has a longer reach, so he should exploit that. In terms of professional MMA career, these guys both have... Two fight experiences. Marcus Paulo Costa with two wins and no loss. And Abdul Hakim have one win there and no loss. So here we go, the grappler doing his thing. Nice takedown, nice top control. Already That's where he wants to be. How much of energy do you expend actually grappling in a fight like this? Yes, you need, it's like I said, I think you spend a lot more energy to try to take somebody down. They're really controlling the floor. As soon as he's in the floor, you can manage to control. So Marcos wait on the right perfect time to bring the fight to the ground. And now he's got the top position, he got side control. That's gonna be hard and to get see, him out of there. And you can see the lack, lack of experience. Why he has not defended anything, he just he was pulling Marcos, hugging Marcos. Yes. Instead of pushing him away. He's definitely look lost in the floor. That's and why Mar that's why mixed martial arts, you know, conditioning aside from your skills is very, very important. If you don't have gas, you're not gonna last three, four, even five rounds for championship bout. And he has the mouth. Now it's gonna be over. Kataga tummy choke. It's a matter of time. He'll tap soon. I think this is it. This is it. Just one tight squeeze. One tight squeeze. It's very, very tight. It's just a matter of time. He's bleeding. You see blood coming out his nose, I think. That is a very tight squeeze right there. Tough guy is this one here. Huh? Not tapping. But two minutes and a half, a lot of time. There he goes. He's resisting pretty well, huh? Yes. There oh, you go. oh, there we go. Just like that. Round one submission once again. Very good. Marco Victory. Paolo Costa. And the jiu-jitsu guy took him to the ground and went for his jiu-jitsu. It's like what we said. Classic. Boa tarde, Brasil. Boa tarde, Brasil. Boa tarde, Boa tarde Brasil. Brasil. Good evening, Brasil, right? Yes, sir. To all yes. the Brazilians tuning in and watching right now, welcome to the exciting well, like, UAE Wars 11. Okay. Marcos came up with the perfect strategy. He, he, he exchanged some stand-up. He waited the right time. He right. took the fight to the ground. So it goes to the ground, it's just a matter of time. I mean, in the battle of grappling and striking from this instance, we saw how supremely talented and advanced jiu-jitsu pedigree that Marco Paolo calls to have. And getting down, first round W. All right, coming up next is the official announcement.
Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Henry Al Andalusi, has called a stop to this bout at 2 minutes and 40 seconds of the very first round, declaring the winner by submission due to a Katakatemi choke, Marcos Paulo Costa. Mr. Farad Darwish, please can you join us on stage to present the award for our winner. Many congratulations. Another first round finish for Marcos Paulo Costa and still undefeated. No hugging there. Yes. Marcos tried to, to, to hug Mr. Fouad. No hugging, man. <laughs> Social distance. That's sure. Let's be safe. Let's keep, keep everything safe. Fights are going pretty fast tonight. Excellent fights we had so far. No decision. Mission knockout. We had a rocky start, but it pays off. We don't see. have we don't have the second round yet. Everything's finished in the first round. Yeah, it, it paid off. Sunny with a lot of experience in Muay Thai and in amateur MMA. Same thing for Muhammad. Muhammad, Alam, a kickboxer from Egypt. A lot of kickboxing matches under his belt and some MMA amateur fights. I'm always excited to see these debuts because I know how to see how they deal with the pressure how they, what they're gonna bring to the table, you know? Yes. And joining us, our leader, Mr. Fouad. The man respons responsible for that. We, we are responsible for that. Not a bad, not a bad turn, turn of events. Yes. I mean, again, we don't have the longest fight, but we have some technicality. Very exciting fight. Yeah. Much more exciting and like this. It's a pity if we lost two good fights with two unintended open eye and go blow, but the game, that's part of the game. Part of the game, happen. yes. That happened. What do you think, Lucio? Next fight, what do you think? I think it's going to be a surprise because, you know, both, both having debut, but we have uh, both strikers, right. so I think it's going to be standing up and a lot of explosion. You have some jutsu back there, brother. What do you know about him? I don't know about him. It's the first time he's, he's fighting, so it's gonna be a surprise. He's a blue belt, I think. He's a blue belt. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. A good blue belt. I mean, listen, what are the chances of a young Imarati Ado? Uh, next, next fight, ladies and gentlemen, in the 66 kilogram featherweight division. Let's call our warriors to the cage, beginning with Muhammad Alam. You are right, Jiu-Jitsu is in the culture here. Everybody trains Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, jiu -jitsu, so. he's a local guy, he's trained Jiu-Jitsu. That's for sure. I mean, they start, what did they do, sir? They start from grade five now, right? Yeah. So, and then you go to university. Before university, you go through NSA. You have to be. If you're in the army, you do it. If you're in the police academy, you do it. So what are the chances? The exposure in Jiu-Jitsu is, is great. And let's share with our, our listeners. In this country, this great country, we are there are more than 145,000 Imarati French kids in a week between days. This is a percentage. You're talking about more than 70 80% of the population. And more than 30% of that age group that we have inside the ring. That's something. Jiu Jitsu changing lives. Absolutely. For Absolutely. the better. And we are very lucky to be part of this ecosystem. Yes. Anyways, I, I serve for the interruption. I just want to say hi to everyone. Well done. The, the actual, the real, the veteran is back. I don't even let go of my, my headset. Even the 
one and only Steve. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> this is Fawad Darish, the general manager of Palm Sports, company responsible for the NRA Warriors. Once and, again, put and, a great event tonight. And Daniel, I have to say that uh, besides the biggest event, we are the only one doing this kind of things. Thanks to Palm Sports, thanks, thanks to Mr. Fawad, and more importantly, thanks to Abu Dhabi. Thanks to the measures that Abu Dhabi has been taken. I mean, there is no better place in the world to be than Abu Dhabi. Because I we are agree. safe here. And his opponent, yes. Yusuf al -Hosani. And here comes the Emirat. We are safe here. The government is taking all the necessary measures to keep us safe, controlled. That's the most important thing. That's the most safety important thing. Safety for the fighters, safety for the staff, for the medical people, for us commentators, all the talents. You know, safety for, for everybody as a whole. And it's that and the drive of Palm Sports to bring the sport of MMA to, to, to the world. It's because we are here. Right. That's the reason. Right. So we have to thank a lot the government of Abu Dhabi and all the athletes, really. People that come and fight and right. show their skills to us. Yusuf Al Hussani, Emirati, hometown hero, featherweight, here at fight number seven versus Mohammed Alam from Egypt. Yusuf Al Hussani is a mixed martial artist. Primal Gym, another great, great place for fighters here in Abu Dhabi. One of the best camps, absolutely. Primal Gym has produced a couple of fighters in local and regional tournaments. So Primal Gym is one of those gyms that you got to go to if you want to be better, you want to be in shape. It's a very nice gym. I've been there before. Awesome place. We've been expecting Al Hussani to come fight with us for a while now. First he was supposed to have an amateur fight, but then his opponent didn't accept the fight. Then he was supposed to have a professional fight, he got injured. So now finally we're gonna have him inside our cage. Right. Okay, your tail of the table, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Egypt versus Yui coming up. And for the official announcement here, it's the 66-gram featherweight division. Introducing first the fighter to my right in the blue corner. Making his debut tonight, came from Egypt, fighting out of the United Arab Emirates. Stands at 5 feet, 9 inches tall, weighing in at 66.2 kilograms. He's a boxer. It is Muhammad Alam. And, and his opponent is trying to left in the red corner, hailing from the United Arab Emirates. Standing at 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 66.2 kilograms, he's a kickboxer, also making his debut tonight, Yusuf Al Hosseini. And of course, Tim Bia Andalusi, your referee for this fight. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, referee Helmi Landolsi for this bout. It is a mixed martial arts versus kickboxer. Here we go. Oh, oh, the the right right away to the ground. With a double leg attempt, using his jiu-jitsu. We'll see what is the game plan because he, he had his head locked on. Here we go, trying to flip in. But he's, he's well. He's protected. He's in the right side. Now he's out. Going straight to the mount. Amazing control. Very smooth transitioning, wait, 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 wait. wasn't it, Daniel? It was really good. Daniel, how dangerous is for a professional fight when you get caught up in the cage itself? You know what I say, get out of it. But if you get caught up in a grappling match, how dangerous is it like what we're seeing right now? The problem is with 
we need that situation, you need to keep yourself calm, you need to breathe, you need to wait the right time to escape. If you if you just try to scramble out MMA, you're gonna get very tired, right. you're gonna get called, and that'll be it. Control. Al Hosani has been very aggressive, throwing dangerous. He's been perfect in the transitions. We can see some blood coming out of his opponent. Those were from the vicious elbows. Here we go. He's he's locked in pretty tight. Locked in pretty tight. And he taps just like that. Another round one submission. Another first round win. Amazing control. No chance for his opponent. He didn't want to know anything about standing up with his That's with, right, he came. Kickboxer. Right away to the Right away to Jiu-Jitsu. But he was really good on the floor. His transitions, he control. Wow. He just had one opportunity and he took it. Defended very well the guillotine, escaped already yes, going straight yes. to the mount. High level Jiu-Jitsu. It makes me very happy to see a local guy winning with this type of display. It was using jiu-jitsu, first, first round finish. You can see the evolution of the sport. Yes, yes. Not we all know. Jiu -jitsu, but MMA. Exactly. Another Plus, I believe jiu-jitsu uh, is the foundation for MMA. Your referee, Henry Alain Delossi, has called us off to this fight at 1 minute 23 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked shot from the UAE, Yusuf Al-Hosani. And of course, we'd like to call upon Mr. Fouad Darish, Managing Director of Palm Sports and UAE Warriors to join us here in the cage to present the award for our UAE Warrior, Yusuf Al-Hosani. Many congratulations. Well done, Yusuf. Well done. Another first round finish. Well deserved. Mabrouk on his debut. And it's a great debut to start off with a win. Well done, Yusuf.
for next fight. Ahmed Abdelraouf against Mustafa Ibrahim Tadi. So a little background on this fight, Daniel. Ahmed was actually alternate. Mustafa was supposed to fight a, a guy from Kazakhstan, right. but he got hurt. And Ahmed, our next fight, fight tonight, tonight is, is at a catch, catch weight of 73 kilograms. So I'm very this evening. Here are UAE Warriors, Warriors 11. Let's, Let's welcome, welcome to the cage our Warriors, Warriors beginning with Mustafa Ibrahim Radi. Besides having a, a two losses and only one win in his record, I hear from his teammates that he's really good. And I, I heard that, that there was some training between fighters and people that we know. As you can see, he's been trained by black belt Marcus Tullio from Alain, who's also the same coach of the main event, Cerilo Ferreira, and Ricardo Perez, another black belt. And they have told me that Mustafa is really good, he's a high level guy. But in front of him, he has undefeated. Ahmed Abdelraou. A hard challenge. A wrestler against a boxer. Mustafa boxer, but we know he's been training a lot of people to him. A lot of Brazilian black belts. Yeah, all his coaches tonight are uh, Brazilian black belts. And Ahmed, a wrestler, out of Egypt. Training, oh, that's, a, that's a good matchup. Uh, training out of primal jump. Another catch weight fight, 73 kilos. And his opponents, Ahmed Abdelrauf. the body of the typical wrestler, right? Stocky, shorter than his opponent, but very strong. Wrestlers are very explosive, very strong. The wrestling training is always very physical, very explosive, so. You, Daniel, was always known as a good wrestler among the Jiu-Jitsu fighters, right? Yes, yes. Tell us about it. Do you train a lot of wrestling, or is it just came natural to you? When I, I, when I start training wrestling, first I start training myself. Like, I have the opportunity to train in Brazil with Daryl Gola. And when I moved to the United States, I keep training with some amazing wrestlers over there. Daryl was a very famous wrestler who came to Brazil to train in Otauro, right? Yes, or, or yes. The he, he, was, he was the, the pioneer 
E talk about a guy who big hand couture nine times in Greco Roman wrestling. Wow. So, level. Randy Couture is a Hall of Fame UFC. So I just jumped in that train, man. I could I could leave the guy alone. I want to train him every day. And really? that's <laughs> definitely brought my jiu-jitsu for a different level. I was so secure about the takedowns and my balance and my top game. I really like the wrestling technique. And I always recommend, especially for MMA. Here we go with a catch weight of 73 kilograms. Introducing our warriors. First up to my right in the blue corner, hailing from Palestine, fighting out of Malaysia. He stands six feet tall, weighed in at 72.9 kilograms. He's a boxer, record standing at one win, two losses. Mustafa Ibrahim Radi. And his opponent to my left in the red corner, hailing from Egypt, fighting out of the United Arab Emirates. He stands at five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 72.3 kilograms. He's a wrestler, undefeated, with four wins and no losses. Mido Ahmed Abdelrahouf. And your referee for this fight, Alexandre Nascimento. It looks like really it's going to be a classical fight. You know what I mean? You see a slim, tall boxer against a little bit shorter and stocky wrestler. Now the question is, how good is Mustafa Jiu-Jitsu? Guess we'll figure it out. Okay guys, I'm back. After doing interviews Welcome with our general start. manager, that was an interesting word. And he just told us that July 31, it's on. Nice. nice UAE news. Warriors 12. Wow. Yes, sir. We all excited. We'll Okay, so here we go, fight number eight. Let's look at the replay. Oh, that was right at the groin. Unfortunately, unfortunately, low blow. But it doesn't look that bad, as bad as the last one, huh? The one that broke the cup. By the way, in the backstage, Yuri showed me his cup. It's really crushed. <laughs> here we go. So to those who are listening now, Lucio is actually showing us a photo from his phone and we're gonna try to describe this as best as we can <laughs> Let's look his cup wow. wow, that's cracked I've never seen this before to be honest. Ooh, it looks like a sad face. Yes, sir I smile, but in a sad face. All right, here we go back to the action now. Oh, oh. oh Wow, good, good punch The rest that doesn't want to take down. But these guys being aggressive early on here in the first round. Throwing Stop punches and kicks. Work his jabs, keep the distance. And he has a big edge advantage on his. He's much taller. He got the longer reach, yes. Yeah. Trying to go for a no, takedown. Definitely try for a single oh. leg. Oh! Wow, great defense. He's going for a reversal. Going to the back. about Mustafa Jiu-Jitsu, huh? Feels like he's doing a good job in the ground so far. He defended so well the takedown went straight Amazing to the back. Amazing defense. Brazilian black belts doing a good job with him. See the coaches giving very clear instructions. It seems like Ahmed was holding his finger or something, but I couldn't see. It's a little hard to see. At least he's defending well. You know that's not easy to choke with these gloves. No, especially when the opponent is a bit smaller. Yes, stronger. stuck. But then he got full back. 
but that's a definitely bad position to be. Just as requested by his corner, he's going to close a triangle on his back. No, he didn't. Look like he's going to move up. It seems that Ahmed was holding the gloves and the referee intervened. Ahmed tried to turn, Mustafa went very well, followed him, and he stayed on the back, still on the back. Flatten him out. Oh. Very hard situation for Ahmed, huh? He's tough, but... He's not showing any any real defense or escape. And he's it's, it's breathing pretty hard now. It looks like he's trying to get gassed out here. And these punches, the, the ground and pound that Mustafa is laying on him must be. Mustafa is, is always keeping one step ahead. A referee That's stands the above him. Up. Okay, mind you, for all of those who are uh, watching from their homes right now, we haven't had round two yet from That's right. any of the fights everything has been first round ko or submission and here we go we're gonna go back to the original position all right here we go back to the action that's a first someone lose the cup in the middle of the fight i've never seen that have you <laughs> all right we got 45 seconds left on the clock here and a fair first round it looks like we're going to have round number two if we got no submission. It looks like. There you go. It's hard to get a choke like this with these gloves and the guy being so defensive. If I were Mustafa, I would be trying to throw much more punches to right. see if he open up. Ten seconds left. Looks like we are going to have round two for the first time. And there we go. We are going to round number two, gentlemen. First time. Daddy, for the first time, we're going to hear the corners. <laughs> first time the coaches are coming in. Armin survived. Survived. He's tough. He didn't show much defense or offense. Besides the takedown that it was, I don't, I don't know if it's a, the wrong strategy because he cannot do much but defend himself. If he just try to overpower to get out there, sometimes he's just gonna, gonna get tired. Yeah, but you see, uh, Ahmed actually strategy was to strike with him. He went for the takedown a little bit out of, out of no other option. Right. Mustafa, very, very big reach advantage going forward. Touching him all the time, he had to go. And Mustafa defended very well. Mustafa walking forward using his reach. Oh, wow. oh, he got clipped right there. Good job. I think the biggest issue right here is the reach right now. Let's see if he's going to be able to defend well like he did before. Oh. And wasn't that lucky this time. 
for effective. Ah, man, he got a single leg take down. Look like he's going for a triangle. I'm mean, defended well. Mustafa corners, oh! asking him to stand up, and he did. Oh! Hey, hey. I mean, just give you space Armidon. for him get up again. I don't understand. It's, now he's gonna take him down again. You got a crazy exchange going on. He's just and he's spending energy. And for a fight that's only three rounds, every energy counts. You can't expend exactly. all of it in round two. And take down attempts really can wear you out. If you just right. keep doing, you're gonna get tired. I think he's gassed out a little bit. I mean, if you look at him, he's breathing yeah, he pretty hard. Down. He's breathing heavy now. He's, he's beginning to slow down. He's carrying a lot of muscle in his body. Yes. And the more muscle you have, the more energy you expend. That's what's happening right now. It looks like Mustafa is not capitalizing on the opportunity because, well, albeit he must be aware of his takedown attempt all the time, right? See himself get a little bit sloppy now, just throwing swings. Right. Put his head down. And it's getting slower. He's backing up a little bit. Not as aggressive as the first round. He's breathing. His mouth is wide open. Yes. His chin is high. Mustafa his... looks more conscious with his hands up. Still right. using his jabs. Keeping right. the distance. Circling around. Such a good jab. Long jab. Oh, oh! You could see that Mustafa stopped because he was afraid of a takedown attempt. Oh! Oh! Back again. Crazy exchange right there. Oh, now. Now that's his chance. Tommy got a top position, half guard. But he looks very tired. He's not doing much. Right. No, I'm with this. Finally where he wants to be. Let's see if he can be effective, as effective as Mustafa was. Seems like he's gonna try the triangle again. See how he control his waist? If he's able to bring up his leg. He needs to bring his leg out of the half guard. And there you go, does. there you go. Oh, but the guy's escape. He's a, he, oh. The thing is, Ahmed has short arms, right? <laughs> you read the movement, Lucio. Yeah. I liked, I loved this movement when I yeah, used to fight yeah. submission wrestling before, many, many years ago. I think both of them are starting to get gassed out now. It's just a battle of... Who's the last man standing? Oh! Did you hear that? Yes, on wow. the chest. Though. He should punch a little bit higher. To get to, the, to Mustafa's chin, he could have caused some damage. It's just swing, it's like he put everything on the punch. He's expending so much energy in one punch. Yes. He's, he's throwing heel. Which I think Mustafa looked more calm. Right. He's, I think Ahmed is just waiting for the, the low kick right. to grab and swing. And Mustafa should be using more his boxing. Right. He's throwing a lot of haymakers. Here we go. Yeah. You got 25 seconds left on the clock now. Oh, that one connected. That was a good straight. He's throwing a lot of those, but not really intelligent strikes, if I would say. I would not... expect a little bit more offense from Mustafa. Right. Considering that, you know, he's being ahead in this fight, but I understand he's scared of his power, of right. Ahmed's power. Maybe that's his strategy. Just there we go. Round let, letting him get tired. And of round two. Daniel, what would be 
your advice if you were in Ahmed's corner, the rest of the corner, what, what would you do? He you was successful with the takedown, right? Yes. I think he can definitely take Mustafa down, but he should try to stay on top. Be more effective on top and stop to throw these wide punches, which is wearing him out. He's just getting more and more tired. So I would recommend him to circle around, wait the right time, exchange some punches, go to the shot, take down, and just strike on the top, ground and pound. And stay on top, right? Stay, stay on stay top and ground and pound. Two times you were effective with the takedown, Mustafa was able to stand up. Okay, here we but go. Might be one Start one round three. I don't know. Hands up, hands up. Round three okay. now. Well, Last and so. final. I think Mustafa is ahead. It's hard to say, but. Don't go to E5. 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 Don't go to E5.
keeps going. And again on the chest, on the chest, on the chest. In the chest. Mustafa yeah. is too tall for him. I think instead of wasting his energy doing the, those punch on the chest, he should go for Ochigari, right, and secure the takedown. I agree, Lu. So I think that that his better chance on this fight is take this fight to the ground, secure the top position, work some ground and pound, and try to finish the fight. Mustafa is a much better stand-up fighter than him. But if you look at his legs, though. <laughs> Got a big red mark there for sure. Yeah? The redness, that's gonna hurt tomorrow, <laughs> yes, the next uh, week. Yeah, oh, gonna, yes. That's gonna turn violent for sure. Just the low kicks. Don't see me wrong. I mean, he can, he can hit hard. He can hit hard. Hard hitter. He's just not finding the, the target. But and when I say he target, needs to I mean finish this fight. He needs to finish this fight. And he has less than a minute to do so. The only chance to win is by knockout or submission. Let's see what happens. We got 30 seconds to go. I would say submission is very hard considering how good on the ground Mustafa is. And 20 seconds left. Mustafa respecting his power. Plus, he knows he's winning the fight, so might, he might just be impatient and, yeah, try to don't get a risk. Why get a risk? There you go. Very good fight. Very technical. Three rounds. Very, very good display of stand-up in Jiu-Jitsu from Mustafa. A good wrestling from Ahmed. That's a very good victory for Mustafa. Now he's 2-2. Two and two. Stepping up. Two victories and two defeats. So it's putting him on the game. On the game again. We are all or nothing here. Either we finish in the first round or we go all the three. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was a really good fight. That was a good fight. A classical display of calm. Both young Mustafa. guys with great future, like. to get the results. I think our judge, we're, we're not ready to have a decision. Right, interview time. And so both, here come, here come. Both the athletes are celebrating. Well, in my opinion, it's a hard sell for Ahmed, what do you think? I never know, but. I think Mustafa win, but. We never know. Like, did he impress the judge with those takedowns? I I thought he, he could. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen after, after three rounds, rounds we go, go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. And the, the judges' scorecard is as, as follows: 28-28, 28-28, and the third judge 29-27 for the winner. By split decision, Mustafa Ibrahim Ramadi. Uh, roll another one. <laughs> and of course, we'd like to welcome you to the Hague with the World Managing Muslim, the Managing Director of Fox Sports and UA Warriors, Mr. Fouad Dalish, to join us for a presentation to our winner. Uh, are you from the studio?
From Pakistan, who's fighting out of Malaysia, Mustafa Ibrahim Aradi, improving his record to 2 and 2. Well done, Mustafa. So Daniel, it seems to be to have some controversy in the yes. decision, and I think Fadi will reassess, and he has something to say. If two referees gave a draw, there should be a majority draw, right? That's what I think. Unless they have gone it wrong. Richie, they are talking now. No split decision. Confused. Just a clarification on the results. Can we please? So we have two goals, one win, so it's a majority draw in this case, all right? Thank you. So the direction for the results is a majority draw. I'm a bit disappointed, to be honest. I don't think it was a draw. I think yeah, Mustafa I don't think so fight, too. I think Mustafa won. But like I said, I think on, on the second round, Ahmed could take it because they take down, so be 1-1, one, one, but in the third round, he got a fall. So right. how, yeah. I don't, I didn't understand, but you so have to respect maybe they have At least two rounds, one for Mustafa, that's it. Well, maybe the judge, they have seen the takedowns that, that uh, Ahmed did a lot in his favor, but what can we do, right? Now, the next fight, <laughs> it's going to be great. How about that Juarez there? The crazy Cameroon, back to UAE Warriors, against André Pinheiro, Motoka. A great Jiu-Jitsu fighter. Great Jiu -Jitsu I'm fighter. really excited for that fight, Lucio. Like, very good record, much more experienced than Juarez. Right. The only hold up is this. He hasn't fight for a while. His so last fight, his, uh, the last time he fought was in 2017. Andrea Motoka, Pinheiro. But he have a lot of experience. His Jiu-Jitsu is outstanding. His wrestling is really good. He's very well-rounded. So I just hope to see Motoka back in the game. Let's see he's gonna, what he's going to bring to the table tonight. It reminded me of the first Juarez that fight here in the UAE Warriors when he faced that wrestler. And the wrestler had no chance to put him down. Juarez is really, really tough. He's been fighting consistency. He's been proving every single match. So it's very hard to tell what's going to happen in this next fight. The full main event. Featherweight bout, what is there? It's just making very interesting and exciting. Around the world watching us on Abu Dhabi Sports, and of course to the UAE Warriors YouTube channel, the penultimate fight of the night. UAE Warriors 11 coming to you live from the Jiu-Jitsu Arena here in Abu Dhabi. We're back with the featherweights at 66 kilograms. Two more fighters to enter the cage. Let's welcome Andre Pinero.
Yeah, what the fuck's up? Man, this guy has been asking to come here to fight for a really long time. He has been alternating a couple of fights, never had an opportunity to step in. And when he received the call, man, he's another one. Security, Saudi. They don't say no, man. There is no fear to this guy. I think we see this kind of attitude pretty much, pretty a lot in Jiu-Jitsu guys. What do you think? Like no give up, no say no, they accepted any fight. Why, why, why so? Why, why do you think it's that? I, th I think in this specific situation, Motoka was really looking forward to do his Warriors debut. He was really trying to get in this show, to jump in this show. And soon he got the opportunity. You never say no. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. You never say no. Is it like a trait of Jiu-Jitsu fighters to never say I no? Think so yeah, like because the ones we have had so far. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah. yeah. All right, this guy is fireworks. I mean, talk about you know coming back to the cage after almost three years. Yes, against Juarez there. <laughs> But that's what he told me. He, he always told me, I don't want an easy fight. I want to fight to the best. I want to put myself in the line again. So I love this challenge. I respect that. And I know he trained really hard for the moment. He looks sharp, he looks ready. But let's see, three years out. Out competing out MMA because I know he's been doing jiu-jitsu competition. He competed not too long ago. So he's been active, huh? Yeah, he's been active, but MMA is a different word. So I just hope Motoka can bring everything he has back. Just just to tell you guys about the safety protocol that we have been that has been in place right. to assure that our fighters are not gonna get sick and everything. Joare is there. He's requested his hairdresser to come to the hotel a few <laughs> days ago to make his hair, but it was not allowed. Really? He hasn't done he, he his hairdresser has not, has not done the test. Since we cannot guarantee that he doesn't he's not sick. Right. So Juarez had Juarez had no, no other choice to just close his hands behind and that's it. I mean this guy, Jared Zaya, this guy is in supreme shape. I mean look at his body. He's in tip top shape. He's been he's a beast, yeah. So let's see what happens. He always looks good. Always yes. fights. Yes, sir. Very explosive. Right. Very sharp. Well rounded. He's a striker, but he's been proving so much in jiu-jitsu. Right. So that's not gonna be an easy fight for no one. And he's very confident. So let's 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 find out how this turns out. I'm really excited about this fight. And he's a gentleman. He trains at uh, Cobra Fitness, which is also uh, like Carmel, one of the best camps, one of the best gyms. Here we go. And we actually have a battle of gentlemen. Because I was about to Andre say that. So nice to so guys are so polite, so gentlemen. They go in the cage, they're like a pimples. Both sides of the cage, they're just like a big money. <laughs> All right, here we go. Official announcements by Fadi. Here we go with the penultimate fight for tonight. Here are UA Warriors 11 back with the featherweight division, 66 kilograms. Introducing first to my right in the blue corner, hanging from Brazil, fighting out of the UAE. He stands at 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing in at 66.2 kilograms. A jiu-jitsu specialist with a record of 10 wins, 2 losses. Motoka André Pinheiro. Yeah. And on my left in the red corner, what an entry.
entrance for the Cameroonian. From the Cameroon, of course, fighting out of the UAE, stands at 5 feet, 6 inches tall, 65.2 kilograms. A white height specialist with a record of 6 wins, 2 losses. They call him the crazy Cameroon, it's Juarez Dia. And your referee for this fight, Henry and Andalusi. Your referee for this match, the co-main event, is referee Helmi Landolt. Here we go. We got a crazy Cameroon versus Motoka, Andre Pijero. Seems to be very relaxed, Andre. So we got a Muay Thai specialist versus a world-class grappler. Here we go. Solid Some punches by Garrett Motoka needs to be careful with that. Oh, wow. Nice wow. kick. Oh, my goodness. Powerful strikes by Harris Dale. Oh, wow. He wins in pain in that one. And you see Andre keeping his hand low now. That's got to hurt. Wow, That's got to hurt. Power kick. Oh, wow. Everything Spinning on those back kicks. fist. Oh, wow. <laughs> a little bit flashy there, huh? <laughs> they are like. Is that a Superman, Superman punch? punch? That's right. Yeah. That was Use a push the of the cage, yeah. Superman punch. <laughs> it's a body kick. There's there is just bombarding his opponent with a lot of kicks out there. Here you go, another strike. They is trying to press him against and the Andrei cage. Is letting Dea get too much of the cage, pushing him on the. On the I board. think Botoka should get out of there, circle around. Right. And soon enough, Motoko tried to take him down because he's, wow. he's getting hurt. Just listen to all the slashes and splashes that's happening, all these kicks. That's got to hurt. You know, the more he gets stricken on those legs, that's going to give in later on. And he's feeling, huh? Yep. He's definitely feeling that. A couple more strikes, he's going to limp on those pain. He's giving as well. Oh, oh! Wild exchange. Mm -hmm. There we go, another one. Look at him. He's wincing in pain. You can see out of his face and the way he moves. They are shopping his legs down. Inside, outside. Jarrus is just punishing that leg. I don't see any takedown attempt yet. Just look at the body of Motoka. Look at the left side of his torso. Look at the redness. And I think Motoka sh should try to take this fight for his element. Try to take to the ground, work right. his jiu-jitsu. Staying there is not... He's not doing bad, but there is being much more yes, effective. Yes, much more relaxed. effective. That's going to slow him down. He's already limping on the leg. His walk is lower. Right. Good kick on the body. Jarrus like is corner is telling him to. Yes, yeah. the time. The to the and Jarrus is, is 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 so confident. He's just striking at will, and everything is almost connecting. Another leg kick right there. Oh, he's Another so one. Oh wow! Look at look at his face. So focused on these leg kicks. They're punishing him. That's the problem for waiting to take the fight down, you know. He's getting hurt, hurt, hurt. Is he going to have the, the enough explosion to to go to, to there? Oh. Wow. To there's leg. We got a minute and 12 left here in the clock of the first round. There we go. He's trying to shoot for a takedown. That's the problem after you get in so much punishment on the leg. That's what I think. I think that's slowing him down now. It's going to be hard. He doesn't have the explosive to shoot like he should be. And there is a minute of fight. They're going to go to the corner. They have a minute break. I think resting that leg is going to help. Worse. Yeah. How about switching stances? 
Southpaw, look for the left straight. It's perfect. 30 seconds, Motokia. 30 seconds. See what happens now. Oh! Ready for the shoot. Be, be careful for the shoot. Got it. 20 seconds to go. Right here in the very first round. And there's been a lot of strikes happening back and forth. Nice. Wow. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, Motokia. 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Another one again. And the battle ranks and round number one. So okay. effective, like it. You can see the leg of Andres' leg. Look how, how red it is when he's sitting down. And the corner is putting ice there. He's definitely feeling that. And there he's just standing up, waiting. And that's only the first round. We got two more rounds coming up. If he if he keeps on getting punished like that, that's going to give in. I think you wait too long. I think he, he should try to combine punches with takedown attempts. The only time at he least, tried, right, he at just... At least to keep there guessing, right? He didn't do that. He needs to bring this fight to, to his and element. And he's gonna be, he's gonna have a little bit of hurry to do that. Because he can't afford having that much right. leg kick anymore. Yeah, now he's gonna be slower, everything's gonna be harder. Okay, here we go now, slaughter round number two coming up. Okay, here we go. Round two. Oh, be more offensive, André. Not letting there put him in the corner anymore. Well, a little bit now. Oh, oh! Close. Yeah. Oh, another one. I mean, it's just the sound of it. <laughs> and then so loud. So well, controlling the center. And now he's allowing there to come closer and closer. And he's, he just doesn't have a way out. You should go like Gustavo and run around, get right. to the center again. Circle, yeah. Right. Wow. That was a powerful one, but. Didn't do much damage. He's still exchanging, he's trying, but right. keeps on hitting that the left leg. That's gonna Those wobble later on. Is he's not shying away from the exchange, but he's getting punished. I think he has to be smarter and there we go, another one. That's gonna give in later on. Oh well, a little bit of showboating there. But you know what they say, don't be overconfident because anything could happen in the fight. Oh defended well now. But then he got hit in the chin, chin bone. Keep focus, Cameron. Keep focus. Look at your straight. Look at your straight. You score points, my bro. I wish Andrea would have his mouth a little bit closed. He's opening. Watch out. If he gets any a punch there, it's gonna, not going to be good for him. His legs really hurt. And Andres' corner is counting on Dea to get tired. But he just, just keeps on going. Doesn't look like it. This guy is in supreme condition. Yeah, yeah. Oh! He's talking to him. Trash talking him. Good 
Oh, wow. that's going to start giving a little bit. Look at him walk. see that he's not putting much weight on that leg anymore. Exactly. Sleep in the leg. He's going to wobble it on. Oh, oh that whoa, was not wow. Good. So well defended by there. Oh! Wow, that was a... Now he's giving it, he's giving it a wow. It was a knockdown, but they kind of hesitated before he... Yeah, he could have, he could have just... So he let Andre recover. Right. And that split second gives a lot of room. Now this is what Andre wants, the ground game. This is what he wants, this is his home. That's yeah, a comfort zone. Yeah, but is saying, don't go, don't go. He wants you there. But here's the thing, though. Oh, he's wow. He's hurt. He's Andre very slippery. Hurt. Right. He's definitely trained a lot of taking down defense. Him, if you don't want to go to the ground, let him get up. Right. Oh. Yeah. Watch out your leg. Yes. One, two, down, up. Come. A minute to go. Yeah. Less than a minute to go. I mean, from this angle, we could see, like, the redness, the bruising. Yes. Of that le left leg of um, Andrew now. Referee, help me. Standing him up, and here we go, back to the striking game. Was that a distraction? Another one. That Drea tried to do. Like, look up, look up, look up. Oh! I, I, it's going to be very hard to come back to a third round with the leg like this. Right. Yeah, I agree. But Andre is a warrior. Huh? Oh, Ben Seconds fight. Wow, and Andre turned his back and there, a gentleman did not, did not hit him. Use the opportunity to hurt him. When he could have. He said, man, look at me, I'm we still fighting. Look at me, look All at right. me. What a gentleman. Huh? But that's sportsmanship. He looks very good, very sharp, very it, fast. Right, and it was explosive. a mistake. And it was a mistake by both of them. Oh, but that look was at the this. opportunity. Look. There was, he looked like he was a little bit out of it, right? For a big second. Yes. No. Look at the replay. I think oh! It was not only a sleep, I think. A sleep. That was right when he tried to stand up again. He got the head kick. Motoko went now, his eyes open. And they let him recover. Recover. All right, coming up next is our third and final round. Last five minutes out is bad right now. It's Brazil versus Cameroon. Out is match. Jared's there versus Andre Vintejo. Man, big, big crap for Andre to come back. and. That was a tough fight. Look, you can see his knee now from the inside. It's almost you can see purple. just the redness is crazy. And they had changed his stance to the orthodox. Right. He's planning a lot more kicks on his legs. Oh, it seems that they want to block. Oh, oh! Wow. Now, man, what a chim on Wow, him there. is just oh, relentless. Look, Look at him. Oh! Yes! Up, 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 up! Wow, yeah. and is a warrior, man. Wow. He's not going to give up. He's smashing him. Smashed. He's going to fight. He doesn't want to get up. He doesn't want to get up. He wait for him. Second knockdown. Wow, fight. he hits really hard. What a grand pound. And he let him stand up. Look like Dea said, I'm not going to kick anymore. Let's go for boxing. That's right. Here we go. Just like what everybody wants. He might be oh. Oh. Just like I said that. <laughs> Another one. Good, Andre. Very good punch for Andre. Still got three minutes He's and ask 35. For a, cross, a hook from over. Right. Dea's hand. Over the hand. Another one. There it goes. He's going to start to oh, give in now. It's really hurting. And Dea has him. acknowledged that. Oh, man, I know you're in pain. Wow. 
jab e manda ela. Calma. Mas agora não. Trabalha. He's gonna say throw a jab agora and go with a overhand. Right. Good kick from André. Look, did you see how he put his hand on his leg? Look how his look, leg is Look, look, the redness of that. It's getting purple. Wow. That's going to be like... Oh! Oh! Mixing it up now. Oh! Oh, good punch wow. from André. Wow! Great exchange. They open wow. up, huh? They are trying to finish, but open up for André's strikes. Motok is still there. He's so tough. After all this... There we go. He's feeling it now. He's so limping, big. He's wobbling. Now he's showing that he's feeling His right. His legs so beat up. That's gonna give he, in. He's still there. His legs have been severely punished. Look at that. He was wobbly. That's jelly by now. Oh! Watch your leg. Watch your leg. Watch your leg. Watch your leg. Two minutes to go, Motoka. Two minutes to go. No. Should he just pull half guard or something, Daniel? It's hard Make to tell, sure I think, Luz, so he's at the moment, it, he's just trying to survive. He doesn't have he, he doesn't have the leg feeling well. Look how he's standing up. Hard. Yeah, he can't. It's tough for him to stay up. Very hard. Plus, that is so slippery. How are we gonna... It's very hard to catch this guy. Now it seems that they want to finish the fight with a punch or something because he's not kicking. Not as much as he could. Good straight there. That's it. That's the guy you want. We beat. And Andre is still in the fight. He doesn't score. Agora é hora de tentar. Smith allow in. I want. But you got to give it to. Motoka. For withstanding all the punishment that he took and is still taken. Yeah, that's incredible how I mean, tough look, he is. Exactly. After three years without stepping in a cage. Right. Very tough. Get and a tough are, fighter like that. Yeah, and they are missing two good opportunities to end the fight. But Andre just recovered. Oh. And he's still fighting. He's the still fight's good. on. Thirty seconds should go. I don't know. Should we try to predict the outcome? At least the last fight we were not so. <laughs> we thought that Mustafa was winning and it was a draw. Yeah. But I think it can't be clearer than that, right? No. This. Everybody thought it was a unanimous decision. Ten seconds to go. That was it. Daya seems to be hurt too. Yeah, I thought he's Did you see he, was he was feeling his leg as well. And his leg is red as well, look. Because he kicked so many times. And that's hurt you too. That is so tough, huh? so strong. Anyways, Motoka did what he could. He's back in the game, and I'm, I'm sure he just needed more training, more timing, and I hope he he deserves another shot. Yeah, it's he, tough. He just have a very tough opponent who is much more active, younger. He looks stronger, and, you know, so. Now let's go for the judge decision. It's not over. Kill Fadi go there and give the decision to us. Andrea didn't shy from the fight.
Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. All three judges have it 13-27 for your winner by unanimous decision, the Crazy Cameroon, Juarez Dia. I would say 30-26 or 25. Yeah. I mean, that was totally a big knockout. Very tough on them. Once again, many congratulations to Juarez Dia, the greatest in Cameroon. Special trophy for you presented by the support and the reach, the managing director of Palm Sports. And to the Warriors, I'm sure we'll be seeing the crazy Cameroon in the future. True Warriors, great fight. How tough is Andrea? How tough is Andrea? How strong is there? True gentlemen, great fighters, great warriors. Now we're back. Seems that we experienced that. Was, that was a great fight. So I think Motoka could could prepare himself more, get in a better shape, get more fights. But just the way he could handle all that beat on his leg, on his body, just show how he's a warrior. So con congrats for both both athletes. Great cool main event. And now for the main event. Lucerino against Tarek. Tarek, our former or our reigning light heavyweight champion, but decided to go to the middleweight. And since it is he didn't want to cut much weight, they, they agreed to have a, a catch weight. Brought to you by Palm Sports, of course. We've been live across the world by the UAE Warriors, Warriors YouTube page, and of course, by the Abu Dhabi Sports. Our final fight tonight, tonight is in the, the catch weight, weight of 90 kilograms. This, this is the one that MMA fans in the region have been waiting for. With me, Steve on the mic, to present our final two fighters. Let's begin with calling Jessamino Ferreira.
terra, cobertos com fantasia. Para o sul deu a riqueza, para o canal da beleza, o Nordeste apoiou. Seria no caminho do Norte, Oeste, Oeste, do Brasil. Do sul ao Sudeste, sou rap, é Grécia, Norte, Nordeste, líder, Sam. Arranco o som em Telling Hall, tá? Norte, Espírito, A, Nordeste. O Nordeste brasileiro sendo representado pelo grande Juscelino. Grandes lutadores do Nordeste. A lot of stuff fighters from the North do Brasil, Andréo. Gold, Jiu-Jitsu, MMA. Cidade negada, como Madrasa, tiradas, já não arrasta, se só fosse um pegada, só acho. Ninguém mais empata, medo meu chapéu de palha Sigo pra batalha, com força, garra, inchada Se cara é isso, não vai ser assim Seguindo bem corner by two great Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters, two black belts, Fabio Bodesan, Marcos Tullio. He had some great corners. Yeah, like you asked before, Lucio, Juscelino came from the northeast of Brazil, which is a, is a place for great, great fighters. So he have that in his blood. He's a very tough athlete. Jiu-Jitsu black belt, so in, with a lot of experience, have a lot of fights. Jiu-Jitsu black belt that in his only appearance in the UAE Warriors when he beat Saui by decision, he did not go to the ground once. I think. Maybe he tried one takedown, or he did one takedown actually. One. Yeah, I think he so. He just exchanged strikes with yeah. Saui. Yeah, he got He's some. Kickboxer. He got striking. He definitely got striking, and he's very explosive. And his opponent, Tarek Sleiman. How about Tarek? Another tough man. First fight with us was for the lightweight, light heavyweight championship against very tough opponent, very strong, and he just dominated in stand up and on the floor. That's amazing main event. Very good matchup. You know, he trains out of American top team with Chukão and all those healers there. I think so far we have had some great fights, but the best one is Chukão now. The best yeah, one is about to come. That's why it's the main event. Clever guy, buddy. But he chose to fight. That's his blood. Might be his fun time here. He doesn't like to fix machines, he likes to break. 
<laughs> you like to break things, not fix the things, yeah? It's been so far here at the Jiu-Jitsu Arena in Abu Dhabi for UAE Warriors 11. A reminder about everybody watching us on our UAE Warriors YouTube channel and on Abu Dhabi Sports. Make sure you check us out on social media to find out upcoming events for UAE Warriors in the future. So far tonight, we've had two knockouts. We've had one knockout, four submissions, two more contests, one draw, one unanimous win, and here we are, the main events of the evening to, to help you present the blue, blue corner, corner steve take, take it away thank you very much and all the guys are out of the blue corner this man is a jiu-jitsu fighter standing five for ten inches tall weighing at nine kilograms with a professional record of ten wins and two losses proudly representing brazil His opponents to my left in the red corner, hailing from Syria, fighting out of Thailand. He stands at six feet tall, weighing at 90.2 kilograms, and an MMA specialist with a record of nine wins, six losses. It is Tyler Sayman. And you are ready to fight our main events. This is me. And for the first time we had two announcers. Yes. That's how important the main event is. One announcer for each fighter. And just like there, Tarek. That was a good leg kick. <coughs> Again. But you know, Juscelino looks so solid, man. Okay, I'm back, guys. <laughs> Here we go. Last final of the evening. Just believe the leg kicks are so effective in MMA because that really can hurt you and slow you down. Daniel, what do you think about these two guys, 90 kilogram catch weight? These are like big guys. They're big hitters. guys. They're very good athletes. They're very good records. Heavy hitters. The heavy hitters for sure. More effective uh, Tarek has been. Just spoke like Yoda. Wow, that was a good body kick. That was a hard one. By Juscelino. Juscelino, southpaw. Just like Juscelino, keep changing his stance. Of course, as we all know, Tarek Suleiman is also the reigning light heavyweight champion and also during his last fight he fought at the middleweight right. which he also won decisively and now he's fighting in another weight class 90 kilos I mean this guy is just all over beast. the place yeah he's all over the place and he's, he's just well rounded you know whatever weight class you give him he's just going to dominate that but let's see what happens here you know not taking yeah first fight with us was in the heavyweight division he fought Saudi wow Tough guy. You said in the corner asking for a straight. He said it's open. They are saying it's open, it's open. His nose is bleeding. And nothing coming from Tarek's side. Maybe they are too confident on their fight. You know, to those who don't know, nice Tarek, body kick again. Tarek actually resides in Thailand. That's where he lives and trains. Nice. Wow, it hurt him. He, hurt him. he felt it. Go, go. There you go. 
Wow. Wow. Pata is just bringing it in right in. Juscelino in the corner, urging him to finish the fight. They saw that Tarek was hurt. Anyways, he has a good position. He's a half guard on the top. He can try to keep the position control, strike. Well, that's what I'm saying. He let the guy up again. We got a striking match here, people. Juscelino is still being a little bit cautious. And Tarek closing the distance very well. But the last time he got caught... Oh! Juscelino has some half hands. His corner urging him to finish if I said he felt again the punch. Oh! Wow! Oh! And he stopped! Oh! A knockout! Oh! What a knockout! A knockout! The Brazilian! Knockout. Juscelino Ferreira! Wow! 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 wow, 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 wow. Wow! Oh my god! That was goodness. amazing. And oh a big show of respect. Goodness. He stopped. He did not hit him anymore. He saw it's over. He stood up. Went to compliment his corner. Went to grip. Out of corner. Wow! He had the hand hands. Wow. Wow. He was hitting. Tarek was spinning. What a victory, Lucio. What? what a fight. How about that? That was crazy. Tarek got hurt like twice before that knockout. And he still doesn't know where he is, he can't stand up. He can't walk. Let's hope he's okay. Big props to Juscelino for holding, holding back with that punch on the ground. I mean, we saw he was hurt. He could have been much more hurt. Juscelino saw that said enough is enough. I won already. Let's get out of here. That was, that was a great catch, too. Juscelino showed a lot of skills tonight. So, a gentleman. Congratulations. What a crazy ending to UAE Warriors 11. How crazy. And just like that, great event, great fight. We are so happy to be back tonight. So happy. Happy for the public, happy for us, working, happy for the fighters, for the corners. They needed that. We needed that. Everybody needed that. And the Northeast Stone plays on the background. Right. And here we go. Now we're going to have the official decision and announcement by ring announcer Fadi. And Tarek is back. Right. He's fine. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for the opportunity, brother. Juscelino is giving an interview while waiting for the decision. <laughs> Parabéns, Lucilino. A message to the Brazilian <laughs> fan. Brazilian fan. UFC. What do you think, Daniel? Ladies and gentlemen, your okay, referee, Hedmin and Dorosi, has stopped in this fight at 3 minutes and 35 seconds out of, of the very first round, declaring your winner by knockout, Jocelino. Remember this name. The managing director of Hong Sports and Two Eighty Warriors to join us in the cage and to present, and of course, a big round of applause for Tadeusz Sinemian as well. Join us at the surprise that reached to present our final award tonight for our main event winner from Brazil, Josimino Ferreira. He wants the belt. 
He can choose middle way or like headway belt. He, he deserves a shot, Russo. He deserves a shot. Which which belt? This guy's a beast. And he put a great show, a great main event. He wants the middle way. I need my here. I need my center here. But I'm here. So I want to fight in Iceland UFC. I'm ready for everybody. For everywhere. Please, no one, please, I'm here. Nobody's ready for Justino, but he's ready for the world. Justino, well done. We will see you as a middleweight champion soon. All right, he wants the middleweight champion soon. Yeah, 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 I'm here. Boss, you give me job, let me do that. Yeah, we can talk about that all fair. We can talk about that all fair. Justino, we have to ask for a whole lot of the event has been. How many congratulations will that talk about all fair? Thank you so much for doing here. You are the one who wants this. Thank you to Abu Dhabi Sports, our commentators, thank you to the judges team and everybody else behind the scenes for making this such a wonderful event tonight. Make sure you stay tuned to our social media to find out about UAE Warriors 12 and events in the future. Thanks again, guys. Keep fighting, and we'll see you next time. Good night. اذا مشاهدينا الكرام وصلنا الى ختام بطوله محاربي الامارات الحادية عشرة والنزال الرئيسي من هذه في هذه البطولة عفوا انتهى لمصلحة البرازيلي جوسيلينو فيريرا عندما تمكن من الفوز بالضربة القاضية على السوري طارق سليمان في الجولة الأولى كما ذكرنا بالضربة القاضية ورحب بضيوفي بعد نهاية هذه البطولة بالكابتن عمار الأحمد مدرب الفنون القتالية حياك الله معنا عمار مرحبا محمد وحياك الله وحيا الجمهور الكريم ماركوس كوستا البرازيلي الذي خاض النزال وتمكن كذلك من تحقيق فوزه الثالث على التوالي بدون اي هزيمه في بطوله محارب الامارات سعيدين بتواجدك معنا ماركوس اا eu sempre treino bastante para chegar 100% pronto e eu acho que essas duas vitórias de هذا السبب انا فزت بهذه المجوله لانني قمت بالتدريب جيد حسب الخطه الموضوعه وهذا دائما ما يجعلني دائما مستعد وكامل جاهزيتي لهذا اعتقد بانني حققت الانتصار ليس بالسهوله بل بالعمل الجاد والصعب الذي قمت به نعم نتحول مشاهدينا الكرام الى الزميل محمود الحوسني ولقاءاته بعد نهايه نزالات بطوله محاربي الامارات اليك محمود شكرا لك محمد فؤاد درويش رئيس اللجنه المنظمه للبطوله هو من ينضم الي في هذه الاثناء نبارك لكم هذا النجاح في هذه الظروف الاستثنائيه وكنا نسولف تحت الهواء وقلت لي انا شخصيا مسوي خمس مرات الكورونا تيست يعني ما شاء الله اجراءات قويه كانت قبل اجراءات صارمه وهذا الف... يعني هذا النجاح نجحنا كلنا نجاح بلدنا نجاح ال... اكيد احنا بنتشكر قدرتنا رشيد اللي قدرت هيئنا المجال انه نعمل هيك حدث عالمي بوقت قصير جدا بفتره صعبه على كثير ناس، احنا لازم ننوه انه المقاتلين اليوم تركوا اسرهم اكثر من 25 يوم مشان يقدروا يشاركوا بهي البطوله، احنا عندنا كثير ابطال كان نفسهم يكونوا معنا بس لا لا يعني لا امور عائليه وامور مهنيه ما قدروا يطلعوا 25 يوم من حياتهم العاديه ويجوا يقعدوا معنا هون بالمعسكر. على قصة الصرام احنا يعني عفوا اهمية والاجراءات وتنفيذها بكل حذافيرة ما قدرنا احنا نعطي كومبرومايز لابطال كثير احنا كنا حابين يكونوا معنا موجودين ما ان شاء الله القادم احسن واحنا بنتشكر كل الابطال اللي شاركوا اليوم بنتشكر ابو ظبي الرياضية بنتشكر كثير ناس يعني كل الجهات الحكومية اللي سخرت لنا هذا الموضوع فؤاد تجربة ناجحة في هذه الظروف الصعبة 
اكيد تعطيكم ادفانتج او فرصه قويه للبطولات القادمه انكم ايضا تزيدون هذا النجاح في النسخ القادمه. لا شك بتعطينا اصرار لنمشي ونفكر بالمستقبل فتره اسرع، احنا اليوم اوريدي خلصنا تخطيط للووريرز 12، احنا باذن الله اذا ما اجانا اي شيء غير عن قدرتنا، احنا النسخه الثانيه عشر راح تكون ب 31 سبعة. احنا اوريدي اخذنا قرار بهذا الموضوع قبل اعلان اليو اف سي، بس بنرجع نقول احنا وين؟ ذس از ابو ظبي، ذس از ارض الحدث، احنا تعودنا بعاصمتنا الحبيبه بدولتنا كريم انه نكون احنا على على اهم اكبر استعدادات اتخاذات الاجراءات المهمه جدا انه نلذب هاي الاحداث عنا. الرساله الرساله الاهم اللي حابين توجهونها بتنظيم بطوله بهذا الزخم في وسط هذه الظروف، شو الرساله الاسمى اللي حابين توصلونها؟ احنا ماشيين الحمد لله رب العالمين على خدا خدتنا الرشيدي الحمد لله رب العالمين احنا نهج الدوله وارض الدوله انه الكل بخير بهي الدوله الامنه والكريمه والجميله جدا احنا اليوم كنا قاعدين بانفايرمنت في كثير منا مش لابسين الماس بس انا ببشر وبطمن الجميع كل حد موجود هون اخذ التاس انا وانت منهم من. فالحمد لله احنا بلد الامان وبلد سعادي وبلد كل شيء خير بالدنيا موجود واحنا بنتشكر الفرصه اللي خلتنا تكون معكم موجودين بهذا بهذا الحدث يعطيكم العافيه وما قصرتوا على هذا التنظيم الرائع فهد يعطيكم العافيه خاصه انتم يعني ابو ظبي الرياضيه بالنيابه عن كل فامز رياضيه احنا عازين عن شكركم انتم كنتوا معنا يوميا بهذا الموضوع فهذا نجاحكم قبل ما يكون نجاحنا ثانك يو سو ماتش ثانك يو احميكم جميعا واحنا واحنا بدورنا كذلك محمد نشكرهم على هذا التنظيم الرائع على كل الاجراءات اللي سبقت البطوله سواء من معسكر ضم كل اللاعبين اجراء الفحوصات لاكثر من مرتين الى ثلاث مرات لكل المشاركين في هذه البطوله نجاح البطوله في ظل هذه الظروف الصعبه يعطينا تفاؤل ان شاء الله بان البطولات القادمه راح تكون اكثر اثاره واكثر نجاح واكثر زخم باذن الله نشكر كل المنظمين محمد ترجع لك الكلمه ولضيوفك الكرام شكرا لك محمود وبكل تاكيد بالنسبه للتنظيم هذا ما هو غريب على اللجنه المنظمه المسؤوله على بطوله محاربي الامارات فاصل قصير مشاهدينا الكرام ومن بعد سوف نتحدث فنيا عن ابرز ما دال في نزالات النسخه الحادي عشر من هذه البطوله